It's a beautiful night for football. Hardly any breeze around. Still a little bit of heat in the air. Uh, I've got John Tamboris with us. John will be giving his expert comments. John, football is so much about how well your body is, how your technique is, but boy, it's about what's between your ears. And these two teams have had a really sort of funny season so far. Mindel was just flying, had a hiccup, came back, had to fight hard to win last week. Very lucky towards the end of that game. And Casarina have been sort of hit and miss. So how do you see this one going? Again, interesting game today. Again, we spoke about Mindel. You know, they played uh, they played at Zuri last week. Just scraped through. They had some so they had some rough patches last week. Um, and, and you're looking at Casarina. They're, they're, they're going to be flying with confidence today. They obviously played the Yappers last week. They got up 4-1. So it's going to be an interesting game today. I think with both teams, they've got talent to burn throughout the ranks. And and what was so excited about it? They're so young as well. So many of them. Um, as a technical director here in the Northern Territory, youth is important for the future, but more importantly, how do you manage youth as they go through a season that's 21 weeks long? Well, again, you talk about week by week. Um, you don't talk about what we're going to do in the next three or four weeks. Right. It's about where we are today and where we're going to be tomorrow. So I think uh, Dave McWilliams, you know, with his, with his squad being so youthful, he'll be trying to drum that. Look, we, we got away with it last week. Forget about last week now. Let's go and, and try and get three points today. And they're going to have a, a fight on their hands today against Casarina. Oh, I think so. Uh, and I'm like that with you and staff. I don't get too many weeks ahead with you guys. Uh, my name is Bruce Stolter. Welcome to Football Northern Territory TV. We really look forward to bringing this game. Well, we'll have a kickoff in around two minutes' time. Friday night, Women's Premier League in Darwin. Where else would you want to be? Pets, um, next door neighbours. Um, my name is Bruce Stoller. I've got John Tanboris with us. We're uh, bringing you a Women's Premier League match here, live streamed in Darwin. And uh, it'll feature two teams that have got, as I said, stacked with plenty of talent. And we've already got a raid happening from uh, the black and uh, yellow side, which is Mindel Aces, which are currently on top of the table. And uh, they're up against third place today in Casarina. Um, who will be running from left to right on your screen in their traditional black and white um, checks. Uh, as we said, hardly any breeze around, uh, not even a zephyr, Johnny. Uh, it's just a beautiful night. Um, and uh, still a bit of warmth there. It was a hot one today. Um, but as you said in the pregame, John, you're expecting to see um, Casarina have a fight on their hands, but you think they've got plenty of confidence after their uh, victory last weekend. Yeah, that's right, Bruce. So you talk about Casarina in terms of depth. They're always going to have depth. Um, they've got those experienced players that can turn the game on their head as well. So no different today. I mean, you know, we, we spoke about Mindel last week. They, you know, they played badly and won. Yes. So when you're getting results and you're not playing the best, it shows that, you know, they've got a bit of depth as well. So I'm actually looking forward to this one. And, and again, watching that, uh, watching Casarina's team today, you've obviously got the likes of Jacinta Misop as well. That will come in, um, and, and, and she'll be a live wire up front yeah. tonight. Yeah. Um, and speaking of some of those experienced players, Al uh, Alex Fulton just then made that run from 20 metres out from her own line down to the uh, Mindel uh, goal line. So she's one of those wise heads. She's on the ball right now. She's going to put a right foot cross in. It twirls in and uh, into the hands and the arms of Michaela Shaw. So Michaela will use all the distance she can. She puts a boot to it. It's a right footer trying to find, uh, I think that's Cassie Reeve. Looks like it and uh, been dispossessed and it now remains uh, that's a lovely ball through to um, Arrigan she goes unselfishly feeds it off but uh, 
Hannah Garland in there to intercept for uh, Mendel. Really active player, really dynamic player, actually, Hannah Garland. Um, she patrols that midfield, John, and, and, and will give them plenty of punch when they move forward. She's not afraid to have a go. Exactly. And what's, what's very, very pleasing is that she's actually playing today. I mean, we, yeah. we watched her last week. Uh, she got stretched it off or got carried off last night, which looked to be a nasty knee injury. So seeing her start today is a big plus for Mindelosis. Yeah, very encouraging. Um, on the right-hand side, sorry, the left-hand side um, of Mindel's side, the right-hand side for Casarina will be a little personal battle all night uh, between uh, number 16 for Mindel, who's uh, fleet of foot, and uh, number six for um, Casarina and Lisa Bleakley. So Lisa's number six, and 16, of course, is Annabelle Kivett. Annabelle's very dangerous too. She gets space. A couple of engines going there. Uh, two girls are actually um, in your uh, Darwin Select side, mate. Just then. Yeah. Um, again, Nadia. Obviously, yeah. we you know we we spoke about Nadia how she'll bring that experience to to the Casarina uh, women's team. But you know, there's there's quite a few girls that are in that NT Select team, <laughs> and always great to get them in rep rep football. It's always great to see you know the young players. But again, looking at that. That team that we brought in for the for the rep team, a lot of youth. Yeah. And you know I love youth, so yep. looking at that, the you know it, it, the future is looking bright in the women's game. And and John, not only just the youth, they're just so willing to learn. They're, you know those kids are just will soak up with the atmosphere of being in a squad, being around some good quality coaches and being around um, quality players. They're all going to lift um, uh, just through the experience, let alone the game on Wednesday night, which will be part of NADOC week here in the Northern Territory. A very important week for the Indigenous calendar. And uh, John and his team have selected a, uh, a women's team here to represent the Northern Territory in a, in a game against the NT Yappers. So that kicks off at 6 o'clock next Wednesday. And um, there was a great session on Wednesday, John. And so you got another one on Monday. So um, how's that progressing for you? So again, Wednesday was pretty high intensity. Again, getting a feel of the players, seeing where they're at and so forth. Uh, Monday won't be that, that intense. Uh, yep. Obviously, we're bringing in players from different clubs again Darwin's such a small community that's that's the best thing about Darwin you know everyone knows each other which is great yep so in terms of a you know playing together in a football sense um we had him in on Monday uh sorry on Wednesday we're going to have him back in on Monday again which will be a light session before they play on Wednesday and again really looking forward to see how they're going to go on Wednesday night yeah same here uh, Wednesday, we'll be live streaming that on NITV and SBS, the World Game digital channels, as well as our own Football Northern Territory TV and FFA Digital will be taking that. So a lot of uh, a lot of live streaming into a lot of places uh, for our NATO Week celebration of football. So happy to bring that. That'll be on Wednesday night here at uh, Larrakia Park, Darwin Football Stadium on the main pitch. Right, it's around uh, coming 4.53 minutes in this first half. Mendel running from right to left, uh, playing the ball back to Michaela Shaw, their keeper. Um, uh, Shaw comes out with the right foot a first time, but only far as Aragon, number 11. A little live wire for uh, the Casarina side and one of the girls also that are in your squad uh, for the um, select game on Wednesday night. I do struggle with Mindle with all the dark brunette hair flowing down. I, that's not Cassie Reeve, I know that. I think that's Jariah Kirby, but I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Yep, you got that one right. Yep, it, it is. was dry. Right. Yep. Yeah. So she's the captain, and she's the uh, elder statesman of the team, and she's 19. So, wow. um, incredibly young team. So Dave McWilliam, their coach, does a wonderful job with them. Uh, he's had the girls under his uh, tutelage for a long time, and uh, they're showing um, the consistency of, of being uh, potential winners this year in, in, in both championship and premiership. Don't want to put the mockers on them. But um, they're just playing with a, a really uh, assuredness that was there. Not there all the time last year, but just as they mature. Uh, they're looking more and more uh, a stronger outfit. This is the Women's Premier League here in Darwin. And uh, it's a Friday night, beautiful night in the uh, dry zone up here in Darwin. And a Women's Premier League match. And early in the first half. And Mindel. Aces are the ones running right to left on your screen. Just had the throw in and they'll get another one. No, they won't. This time off came off a middle player. So Courtney Wilson will come in and take that for Kazarina. No, she's going to give it to Fulton. Referee says, can we have it back a few a few meters? That's uh, Pritchard Davies, a tall number four 
for Casarina. Fulton on the ball, he threw it in, he's now got it back, looks up. And this time she's only found Marinell. He's put a ball through to her sister. The chase is on, keeper comes out. And that keeper is Shana Edwards, nice strong stuff from Shana. Uh, the custodian for Casarina on that occasion. Yeah, well read there by the goalkeeper. Quick off her line, saw the danger and didn't take any chances. So, well done. And as a centre-back, when you've got those... That's forwards doing the turn and the ball put through to them. You never really know which side of the body it's going to go on. And from your point of view, you, you know, your technique is, is really crucial at that point. Exactly. You don't overreact. Exactly. And, and you look at, you know, if you're going to play a high line whatsoever, yep. the goalkeeper's got to be off, off, off their line in a, yep. in a flash to yep. read that through ball. So yep. just watching that, most of Premier League teams, they, they tend to stay high yep. and defend high. So, so uh, Lisa... We'll put it out, number six for Casarina. Chased, a good chase too. Plenty of effort and energy there from uh, Annabelle. Give it. And uh, on the ball now is Marinelle Juan trying to find a sister. Goes towards Hannah Garland. Hannah Garland and Fulton will contest this one. Garland's there first. Puts a, a hefty pass through to Tegan McWilliam. Comes off her. But as far as Kirby. Kirby's put that through to um, the wrong, wrong coloured jersey there. So the ball's bouncing around the midfield here, Marinelle. That's Matilda Carter on at number six. That's a nice ball across pitch. Slows them down. Michaela Ridley on there, number three. So we've got a Matilda, a Marinelle, a Michaela, and a Michaela. I'm going to test you on that. Ball's been left, and uh, who's coming back for that? Looks like uh, uh, Larissa Rawmore. She's fitting back on the action. Larissa has uh, had time in the Canadian League. She's got a strike on that. <laughs> Three steps and bang. Put it well downfield, where it remains. Bit of head tennis going on. Now comes to the foot of Pritchard Davies. She goes back to that player we just mentioned, Larissa Rawn, who's still on it. Good, strong win for her. Pritchard Davies again goes across to Bleakley. Bleakley brings the ball under control, looks up. Sides will go again, now puts the ball across. Well played. Again, another great pass across. Newcomb on the ball now, it looks like. No, it's Larissa Rawn. Again. Fulton has a shot from out of range. Some promising stuff from uh, Casarina there, John. Controlling the ball, just possession game. Again, yeah, trying to force it. Uh, not trying to force it. They're trying to play into that attacking third and yep. trying to use combinations. Uh, and again, great build-up play there. Just unlucky with the with the finish there. It looks like they're playing Yolanda uh, K9 number 14 as a a sole striker or not. I may, maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe um, uh, Jesse Newcomb is sharing that role with them, number 17 for Casarina. Anyhow, we're with Annabelle at the moment. She's put a little a tapping, tap and run over the top of Bleakley. Bleakley's just assured in that. That's lovely work from her. And a ball that's going to find Missob. Missob on the run is dangerous. She puts dug at that, the vision. A beautiful ball through to uh, Jesse Newcomb on the run. She puts in a right footer. Both shot and pass and centre and whatever else you want out of it. Into the hands of Shaw. Shaw, the keeper for Mendel, puts it back into play, but only as far as Rawn. Now it falls to the feet of Hannah Garland. Looks up. It's a long ball through. This is a foot race that Annabelle Kivett will win. So she has the ball, first time left foot across, and only as far as Nadia Lely is in the central defensive role for Casarina on this Friday night. This is a round seven match, so six rounds after returning from COVID-19. And the world of COVID-19 just won't go away, John. If you're in Victoria, it's all on again. Six weeks down. Yeah, not, not, not good news. Oh, no, obviously, the kids in can't play football again, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. not good. Uh, Matilda Carter on the ball goes into uh, Marinelle. Marinelle Carter, nice work from her. Puts the ball across.
So you might hear Rowdy's the the the, the call from the uh, crowd. Rowdy's is the uh, the nickname for Casarina Football Club. Nadia on the ball there, number five for. That's probably going to have two punch. No, it doesn't. Annabelle's quick enough to get to that. She's got a great running style, does a lot of athletics as well. She comes in unselfishly, puts an assist straight in to Duane. Duane goes on again to a uh, first time shot from uh, Reeve. Just, um, just looking at Casarina's setup today, Bruce. Um, Casarina look like they've gone with three at the back and gone with obviously five in the middle and, and two up front. So in terms of the way Mindel play, you've obviously got Annabelle that plays high as a, as a left winger and you've got Cassandra Reeve playing as an out-and-out -out wing on the right. So I'll get a lot of joy in terms of a lot of space out in the wing today. And it was a good example of it right now. Right, well, we'll, we'll keep a watch on that. Um, John Tamboris, uh, expert um, insights today from John and uh, has noticed uh, an opportunity for Mindel. Um, let's just see if... Um that takes place on whether Casarina makes a change, but they're certainly playing three with Larissa, uh, looks like Larissa Rawn in front of those three. As a central defender, when you had three across the back, there's a lot of work for you. And again, if, you, if you're going to play with your five in front of you, who you're obviously your left and your right side of players are your wing backs, yep. you know, they've got to have that, that you know, to come back and, and help out the back four if the, you know, if the team needs that, that, that extra hand. But uh, if you're playing three straight centre half, sometimes it makes it a bit awkward. Who, you know, which centre half takes one player? Yeah. When you go th and the way Mindel are playing, they're playing with obviously two wingers up high and a strike up front. They've yep. almost gone man for man. Yeah. So if um, if Mindel get the ball a little bit quicker up up the field, they could create a few problems for Casarina today. All right. We'll see how that uh, develops. Jariah Kirby then with a clean up from the back for Mindel, but only far again as a Casarina back three here, and this time. Bleakly, now that we're going on the grandstand side. Missile puts the ball in, hits Marinella in the stomach. She's continuing on as is Missile. Missile now puts the right footer in. Great work from her. Solid impact from... Uh, so Shaw runs back. Great defence again. Is that Kirby? No, Reeve it is. I think no Kirby. So really good football from both teams. Shots on goal. Shaw committed. Heavy collision with... Um, Yolanda Canai gets up, goes back into the fray, and um, Jai Kirby cleaned off the line. I mean, that's what you wanted from Michaela as well. You know, nonsense goalkeeper came, and she had to she had to get to, had to get to her fist onto that, and she did. Yep. And now we're on the other side of the pitch, and we've gone three v three. So it's end to end at the moment. It is. It's uh, Friday night, end to end here. Um, round seven, Women's Premier League here in Darwin, Northern Territory, and. Uh, so thankful to bring you the live streaming of all the women's games this year, including the finals. And uh, currently this match is between first and third. Mindel leading the table in the Women's Premier League. And up against Kazarina, one of the powerhouses of women's football, as is Mindel uh, in our game. And we have no score on the board at the moment, but as our, our technical expert said, there's been uh, an end-to-end -end contest. And uh, he's looking forward to seeing how Mindel manage the defensive pattern from Casarina and Casarina manage the attacking flair from Mindel here this afternoon, uh, early evening. Fulton on the ball again, cleans up as she does so often for Casarina, founds a fairly loose missile but turns back in. She's a left and right footer. Looking for someone to pass it on to get to Pritchard Davies, goes back again. She'll go back again, this time to Bleakley. Good pressure from Tegan McWilliam. Pressure's still there. Turns inside bleakly. Nice play from her. Trying to find that time. The Kazarina player doesn't. Comes off ricocheted into Mindel. And Reeves come right back to clean that up. She's come right over from the right wing to do that work. So good effort from her. And Cassie McWilliam puts the ball upfield, but only as far as the back of Kenyai. So it's going to be throw in. And we spoke about it before, Bruce, in terms of the way Kazarina have set up. Going forward, they're going to have numbers in terms of overloads in the midfield especially. It's that transition when, you know, when Mindel go forward is having less numbers at the back. So you've got to give and you've got to take some. So <laughs> We'll see how that plays out. 
It seems like uh, Alex Fulton also gets a roving permit. She just moves around. I see her in so many different parts of the field. Um, she's also dynamic and plenty of energy and a great engine. She's uh, down on a fixing her socks up now, but she just runs all day. Number three for Casarina. She's such a key player. She is, and you, I think they've given her that free role just to sit in front of the back three and just to roam and control things. But it's, again, going forward's great, but it's that transition. If Mindel get that quick transition out, you know, it could get dangerous for him. So the committing board bodies forward, which is great, but obviously got to be wary that obviously Mindel have got the, the players up front too to hurt them on the counter. And when you do counter too, you've got to have pace. You've got to do it direct. And uh, that really fits Mindel's style. So we'll see how it plays out. It's around the, coming up to the 18th minute mark. This is um, round seven. So Mindel Aces, who are leading the competition, are running from right to left in the yellow and black up against the third place, Casarina. And that's Lisa Blickley on the ball there. She only goes as far as the head of Cassie McWilliam. That's Tegan McWilliam, her twin sister, in the middle there. Nice battle with Pritchard Davies. Davies... Always giving the assists off, very unselfish player. And Jesse Newcomb's in there, number 17. This time Davies was thinking of a shot, and Ruan will have a go, and she does. Only as far as Missop. Again, Fulton making herself available. This ball's just ricocheting off all the players. Kenya on a lovely work from Alanda. Didn't have to think about it. First time, turn, bang. I think uh, she just hit it too straight there. Yeah. Straight into the magnet, Michaela. Sure. Keeper. And uh, well played by Lisa Bleakley. Number six for Casarina, playing this role right back. A lone role today with only one inside centre back. Marinelle Juwan in there, number eight. A couple of uh, sisters, team, sister teams out there tonight. That's unfortunate for Newcomb. But she's offside. Again, watching, watching Casarina defend, you've got Aragon that drops into that hole as well. And you've got Misob that drops into... They go back almost to a, a back five yeah. when they're defending, when they've got yeah. that time. So yeah, I just saw that. You're right. Absolutely. And do you need... You need a particular style of player or players to be able to do that, John. Is it about fitness or Again, or we, vision? Talk, we talk about wing backs. You know, wing backs have to have that engine to be up and down that line. So in transition, they've got to defend quick. And then in transition going forward, they've got to get up quick and support the forward play. So we're talking about, you know, quick players that can get up and down that line that have got that, that endurance. Yep. So, and again, technically good players as well that can, you know, produce something on the other side of the pitch as well, not just to defend. So, um, yeah, they are talented players, those wing-backs. So the ball's got out on the uh, scoreboard side, the North Crest scoreboard side, and that came off uh, Michaela Ridge. Try Ridley. So that was off Ridley, not Ridge. This is round seven, Women's Premier League here in Darwin. A beautiful Friday night. No breeze to mention and um, temperatures dropped a little bit, a couple of degrees, lights have come on full. Uh, this is a perfect setting for the women's game here this evening and uh, both teams who like to attack and play with flair will enjoy these um, conditions. That's Ridley on the ball then. She's just been arrogant, just pushed right through there and made a, an opportunity for this raid from Casarina. Annabelle's come back to do just some defensive work she needed to be because uh, that's a lovely ball back in. First time shot, just missed by Newcomb, but she won't, she'll have a go. And Leander does, number 14 for Casarina. Um, the thing about, about, about just in the miss of just then, it's like you, you think you've got it, you think you've got it covered, you think you have, you think it's, what's that, that cartoon, you think you have, you think you have, whatever. <laughs> but anyhow, she gets down to the goal line and she finds just enough room to be able to get that assist back into the goal, that pass back in, and uh, it was very dangerous. And we speak about, you know, your wing backs getting down into attacking areas. There's a great example there, getting down the line, getting a great ball across, just obviously no one there to finish. Yeah. There's a, uh, again, sure up the top. There's a lovely shot. 
That's Aragon, is it? Yes, it is. Yep. Looks like it is. Number 11. Well taken. Ball bounced up into a right foot. Just placed it beautifully into the uh, top section of the net there. Um, and that's, John, your point about always set pieces. The most dangerous time for a lot of teams. Uh, again, irrespective of the time then, uh, which is, you know, halfway through this first half. Switching on as a defensive pattern on, on corner kicks. How many times do we see that? It's those one percenters, Bruce. We talk about, you know, you know set pieces can win your games. And we, we speak about it all the time. You switch off corner kicks, free kicks, you'll get punished. And, and there was a good example there. Obviously, Michaela will be disappointed with her efforts there. She actually came out, maybe maybe the first idea was to maybe punch yep. and clear her lines. Obviously, try to grab it, spilt it, and then obviously Aragon there to put the ball away. So, look, 1-0 to Kajarina. Um, it's been pretty... Um, it's been pretty even so yeah, far. Yeah, but yeah. Again, good finish. Yeah, it was a great finish. Right footer, number 11, Aragon, and didn't hesitate. Um, and again, I've seen a lot of players put that over the crossbar. So well played by her. And it's a 1-0 scoreline to Casarina. And Bleakley on the run again. This will be going on all night between her and 16, Annabelle Kivett. A nice little return back, gain a few more metres for Kazarina. So it's Marinelle, Joanne, nice idea but wrong player. So unfortunately for Mindel, they'll roll out of play. I just need to regroup here, they're a little Sloppy for their style of play at the moment. Not really connecting with their passes. Just need to miss up onto that early. And Cassie McGuigan will come in and clean that up and does. Kirby, Kirby puts the ball through. Annabelle Kibbett wins that one. Looks up. There's the ball again. So Hannah Garland and a race in Fulton. Fulton wins that one and puts it out of play. Again, the other plus two for Mindelaces is when they're looking to go forward, both wing backs can actually go and, and, and create an overload um, in terms of uh, you know creating an overload and supporting their uh, their wingers. At the moment, you're, you're looking at um, I think it's Cassie, Cassie. Yep. Sitting out on the right hand side, marking it no one. So good ploy is maybe to push her on and look to create an overload, which she might get an opportunity now. And when you're coaching a team and you're sitting in the technical area and you see these opportunities, you know, is, is, it a, is it, from your point of view, do you act on them straight away or you just let it play out a bit and, or is it something you have to address there and then as soon as you can? Again, once you see the opportunity to create overloads on any part of the pitch, yep. I think it's, you know, coach's job to get up and, and, okay. and, and get on top of it straight yep. away. So yep. in terms of making Here's that shot. call, yep. making that call, once you see it, telling your player, look, this is what we're looking at doing. This is how it's going to happen. Any opportunity we get to do it, let's try it. Okay. So uh, number eight, Larissa Rawn with a shot there. She brought a smile to her face and a little giggle. <laughs> um, basically said, I'll have that again, please. Uh, but it now sits with uh, the left footer. The king of the left foot, Cassie McWilliam, comes in. Solid as ever, puts the ball over, trying to find Carter. Carter's onto it. Carter got the foot toss, a nice little inside step. Here we go. This is a lovely foot race. And Juwan's on the ball, takes a shot early. Hands on head, looks to, this, looks to the night sky. It was a great burst of speed there, just out of the block. She just came to that, flicked it around the defender and exploded. Yeah, Rachel has that. Yeah, yeah she very, really very does. quick. Just obviously the finish will let her down, but lots of positive signs for Mindel there. We talk about young Bruce. How young would she be? She's, um, if she's young, not 14, she's just 15. Youngest? Um, thereabouts? Yeah, well, the youngest is uh, Chase okay. Desachi in the Appers. She's 13. She's 14 shortly. Yeah, wow. yeah so these guys would be, uh, I think from memory, are 14. What I need to do is put their ages next to their, on their team <laughs> sheets to help us. But I was saying to the groups the other day, just the average age of our women's Premier League and men's Premier League is five or six years younger than anywhere else in the country. Um. Yeah. 
So they get plenty of opportunity and they, they're grabbing it with both hands, feet. And enjoying their footy. This is Matilda Carter on it again. Running through the midfield as she normally does. She puts a ball that's had a bit more distance than she wants, but does find Annabelle Kivett in the end, but Annabelle turns it inside where uh, Nadia Valley cleans up for Kazarina. And Nadia, Nadia is one of those players, number five of Kazarina, just, her engine just does not stop. She's, so, like the, she's like the general in the, in the back line, would yeah, you say that? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you know, just incredible energy. So this will be uh, McWilliam in with uh, Newcomb. Newcomb wins that one, puts the ball through. But Kirby's going to clean it up for Mindle. She may go back to the keeper. She, no, she doesn't. She goes back to Tegan. Maybe William Hill will go back to the keeper. A dangerous ball, but in other words, beautifully threaded. Um, Very good so ball. So a gorgeous ball in the end. Marinelle goes ahead. Here's the foot race. Joan on the inside. But this time, Courtney Wilson there first. Number two for Casarina. Kirby again, this time to Matilda Carter. First time put through. Rachel's on the ball for Rachel Jawan in the back there. Referee's okay with it. So nice play from Lisa Blickley. Puts it out to uh, Jacintha Misob, who finds a Lewis Aron on the run. This will be a turn and chase. One that Cassie McWilliam will win, and she does. It was clever there from Cassie. Just sort of put that body in front. And yeah. Just a little body check there. Yeah. Just put a player off for a quick second there and... Yeah, and took off. Just experience there was great. She wants the game going. She come in and taking that throw, which she would, not, would normally not do. Hang on, we just see the miss has gone down here in front of us in the grandstand. Referee hasn't seen it yet. We'll pull the game up in a minute. Annabelle on a run, and Lisa Bleakley cleans up. Jacintha is in uh, a little bit of pain here, a little bit of trouble. Number seven for Casarina. Referee comes over, see how she is. It didn't look like a tackle. It just looked like the way she changed direction now. I think her her knee, I think, just sort of gave way. So maybe buckled a little bit there. And you get, you get the weirdest injuries. You can get the serious injuries from nothing and have a full-on serious collision with somebody and walk away with a scratch. You're doing well to predict what's going to come out of any contact. In that case, just think it was just on her own. So she seems to be okay now. That she's run that jizziness out on the ball there now. She's going to have to make another run. It's gone to Yolanda. Yolanda looks for a one-two with her. She said, couldn't you go on the other way? But anyhow, she's going to have to make the run. And she does do that. Got Cassie McWilliam trailing behind again. Two fantastic footballers here in Darwin. Let's see what happens here. It'll come off. No. Just lovely work by Cassie McWilliam. That's so good. To do that, out of that back corner, win the ball, put it and find the dangerous Kivett. Give it back to McCarter. Carter's got to keep this in. Doesn't, unfortunately. Yeah, again, Cassie showing her experience on the byline there. Didn't want to concede a, a corner. Uh, worked the line, won her battle, and then obviously went into transition with a great ball going forward. So. Yeah, it was a lovely ball, wasn't it? Very good. Fulton onto it, trying to find... One of her players, but only finds the player we were just talking about, Cassie McWilliam. There's a bit of work from Rawn. Unfortunately, she's been caught up. Richard Davies has got called up for that. So, from this set piece, Cassie takes the uh, opportunity. She'd like that again. It's not very rare for her to find the wrong colour, wrong player. But she did. She found a black and white rowdy kit there, belonging to uh, Lisa Beakley, number six. So 31st minute coming up to 31 minutes and 20 seconds of this round seven match. It's still 1-0 in favour of Casarina. The Rowdies are in black and white check running from left to right on your screens. Uh, these players are on side, are they? Yes, they are. Ball comes inside from Cassie Reeve. Still in play. Cassie and Courtney Wilson there. Reeve still with the ball. Reeve's in there, comes down. Wilson... And Nadia Yelly come out of there. Fulton on the ball now. That's a nice ball. Plenty of space here. Marinelle goes in to defend. Just the distance that Marinelle Juan just made then in like eight, eight, ten minutes very quickly. 
to get in there and put pressure on the uh, Casarina player in Jesse Newcomb. Goal score on the ball there, but it's bounced off her. Only as far as Garland. Garland puts a, for her anyhow, a, re a reasonably lazy sh pass over the top, trying to find Reeve on the run. But only finds a Casarina defender and then back to the keeper. Now we're back in play. This is Kirby on the ball here. Fulton in with a nice decisive, decisive tackle. Pritchard Davies puts a lovely ball through to Missile. This will be dangerous. Marinell, Joanne on the middle. Missile will have the first time shot and does. Great save from Shaw. Shaw just waited a time, John. Good technique there and pushed it wide of the goal. Still remains in play. Yeah, great save by Michaela. Again, we spoke about, you know, punching the lines and getting the ball out of your danger zone. And on that occasion, well saved. But just looking at Jacinta, obviously she's gone up into that, into that, you know, one of the strikers up front. Yep. So second striker. Still on the ball. He's going to have a shot now after one from Pritchard Davies. And just in that play before then, you had, uh, you know, dominant players like Fulton make that make the great tackle, put that ball through. <coughs> Pardon me. And then miss up, get into space, have Ex the pace. Exactly. And, and what's who's, uh, two who's impressed me a lot is that uh, young Aragon on the, on the right-hand side. Yes. Of yep. In terms of defensively, she's been in defensive, she's been doing her defensive duty as a wing back. You know, sometimes you, you, you tend to, you know, ball watch and stay forward and so forth. She's like, look at her now. She's sort of tucking in now, trying to make that back four. So... She's very, she's impressed me defensively today. And again, attackingly, she's obviously got the goal today as well. So it says a lot about a young player. Yeah. Uh, and willing to do a lot of the work off the ball, as John's mentioning, in the uh, 34th minute coming up right now of this round seven match. Right, Newcomb on the ball, looking to pass it through to um, Pritchard Davies, but doesn't find the mark. Teague McWilliam on the ball, goes back to Kirby. Kirby's looking to find Marinella. And it runs under Marinelle and out of play. So Bleakley will restart this with a throw in on the grandstand side. And does dust that. And does dust that. No, it does adjust that. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's been a long day. Ah, Yolanda on the ball now. She looks up finding, uh, I think that's Wilson. It is Courtney Wilson. That's a lovely pass from Courtney Wilson that finds Newcomb. Newcomb, unfortunately, only went as far as Kirby. Kirby looks forward. Now Rachel and Nadia. Nadia Ellie there first. She goes to Shana, the keeper. Keeper puts it out. Again, well read by Nadia again. Was. All over the top. Over the, over the top, sorry. Did you say over the top? Over the top, yeah. Mate, you've been up early too. <laughs> in fact, I saw I you have, on the road. I have. <laughs> you, there's not many of your cars in town. It must have been you. It was really early. Um, and we're here at Larrakia Park. Uh, Darwin Football Stadium on a Friday night, Women's Premier League. Uh, the leaders of the table in the Women's Premier League, and that's a shot from one of their players. It's over the... Oh, just nice hands. Looked like it could have slipped through the back, but uh, really nice hands from the uh, custodian for Casarina, and that's Shana Edwards. That ball was put by by Dry Kirby. She hasn't really had much to do today, no. Shana, so far. So, again, great shot by Kirby, and thought it was going to test her, but showed great hands there. Didn't it? Just stuck. That's Ridley on the ball there, trying to find Reeve. Sort of does find Reeve. Her and Fulton on it. Now it's gone out of play where uh, uh, Courtney Wilson, sorry, will take that ball, not Fulton. Fulton's on just on the inside of her. Okay. That's the left footer, so it's got to be Cassie McWilliam, and it is. She's got great technique on that left side. And diffused that problem there, and now it's coming back out of Casarina's half. Miss Ops on the ball, looks up, and she places that one towards Newcomb. Newcomb was looking for a, another run from Miss Ops, but that didn't happen. Nice play from Kirby. In the defensive there, she would like her pass again back, but she's been everywhere across the back four and so solid for Mindel. As has Fulton for Casarina on the ball there a moment ago. Here's a rebound that could be dangerous, but Nadia Valley's there first, puts it out of play. 
So, 37th minute, I want to thank our sponsors, the Northern Territory Government, for their support of women's football and uh, what we do here in the Territory. Always appreciate it. Uh, to uh, Hyundai, uh, great supporters of football here in the NT for many, 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 many years. And uh, also to uh, Northcrest. Ball's now with Nadia Ellie, he comes out, but only as far as Marinelle Jawan. Nice work from her, she finds it. She does, Hannah Garland on the ball. Nice tackle, but Fulton comes out the better off with that one and scurries away into the midfield, chased by Carter. Yeah, tried and that reverse pass there. It was great. Yeah. Going one direction and then Go the other. decided to play that inside ball yeah. by Fulton. Great imagination, just didn't come off. Right. That's uh, Courtney Wilson with that through ball to the player we were just talking about, Fulton, who just has done 30 Ks already in this match. <laughs> Here's a shot. Oh, it looks like it's uh, either Newcomb or Larissa Rawn. I'd, I'm going to go for um, Larissa Rawn on that one. Again, we Had spoke a nice little turn on it. We spoke about Fulton again. She's in, she's in everything, isn't she? She's yeah. up and down the pitch now. She's obviously sitting in front of her back three again. <laughs> she's yeah. everywhere. Yeah, we put a... She's got a, a dominant on her. She does a few Ks. Right, playing out from the back, shore to a short pass to Kirby. Kirby comes to Marinelle Juwan. Marinelle, unfortunately, has lost that ball. Kirby comes back in with determination and forces it out over the grandstand side of the pitch. This is Larrakia Park. Darwin Football Stadium. We're on Larrakia Nation. I want to thank the elders, past, present, and those emerging for permission to play the game, the beautiful game of football here at uh, Larrakia Park. Don't forget Wednesday night next week, July 15, 6 o'clock kickoff. We'll have the NT Yappers taking on our select side from Darwin in the women's game. Uh, and there'll be a welcome to country, of course, from, uh, for us to be at Larrakia and playing on their country. And then we'll have the men's NT Wawas taking on the NT under-23 men. And that'll kick off around 8 o'clock. It'll be a great night of football, John. To, you know, free to get in. Come down, bring the kids down. And I think it's still school holidays. Are you still on holidays then? Oh. Still at school, yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, it is. I'm pretty sure next week is as well. So great night. Come in, bring the kids down, bring the family down. It'll be a really great atmosphere. And I know it'll be really good football, John. I what I saw in the training sessions the other day from all four teams, good. Yeah, exactly. Really exciting. Um, again, watching all those four teams play will be uh, a, a great match. And obviously, it's one of our biggest events. We, we yes. always speak about NAIDOC week. Uh, it's one of our biggest events in the, on the calendar. And... You know, we're looking forward to coming in, and I think it'll be a great spectacle both for the women's and for the men's yeah, game. Yeah, thank you. I think so too. Um, and, of course, all brought to you on the NITV network and uh, SBS and the World Game, as well as FNT TV and FFA Digital. Here's a run from Kivit. This is beautiful balance from her. And uh, Wilson gets in there and delays it, but only as far as Reeve. Reeve on the ball now. What will she do? She puts it back in, but only as far as Fulton, unfortunately. And that's been uh, diffused by Kazarina. Uh, really dangerous there for Mindel John, but uh, in the end, a wayward pass. And uh, Kazarina got out of it fairly easily. And again, just looking at Annabelle Hebert there, you know, coming inside, <laughs> taking on one, two, yeah. three. Would have opened up for, obviously, her last touch. Obviously, overran it towards the end. But, you know, they've got those dangerous players, Mindel, where they can change a game in the, in the blink of an eye. So, and Kazarina will be aware of that. So, good to see... Annabelle hitting her strides there. Yeah. Yeah. And she's one of the uh, senior players, like 15. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but lovely balance. And as I said, does a lot of athletic running and stuff. You can just see that she's a, a natural athlete. Kirby on the ball now. He was just fantastic in her work. Captain of the club, captain of the women's Premier League side, uh, and just works tirelessly at the back there. Cassie McWilliam on the ball now finds Marinelle. Marinelle's dispossessed by um, who else but uh, number seven, Jacintha Misob. Misob goes to the land of Kenyai. Kenyai goes back to Newcomb. Newcomb takes a first time shot, and that brings a step, jump, and touch of the centre bar by Michaela Shaw, the keeper for Mindel. Had it covered, but some really enterprising play there from uh, Casarina, mate. Again, looking at Jacinta, you know. Can, can sense danger. She's gone in there. She's obviously gotten first to the ball. 
and then they're straight into that transition and they're going to have numbers in that transition. If you're going to win the ball high, you're always going to have numbers playing up forward. So a bit unlucky there. They'll be disappointed that they're not two up. Goal kick taken. Finds Anna, uh, Annabelle. And that goes to Nadia. Nadia now finds Larissa Rawn with plenty of time, which is dangerous. Pritchard Davies on the ball, looks up, puts a, tries to thread one, does. That's Arrigan on again. She's already got one goal. Gets a left foot to it. A little bit of a foot race between her and Ridley. And uh, Aragon looking very positive on the left-hand side for Casarina in uh, both offence and defence. Good ball by Davies as well. Wasn't just it? that vision, yeah, just to try and thread that ball through. Very, very good ball. Her role's pretty key in the, in the club, you know, in, in her role in this game. She sits there in the midfield. Often you don't notice her for a while, and then she'll come in and do things like... You know, so she's one of those very unassuming players. Every side needs one. Right, Yolanda. Uh, sorry, Annabelle. She's still on the ball. And this time, Nadia Yelly gets in there and cleans that one up. Really exciting player whenever she gets the ball. And uh, Annabelle Kivett, number 18, here on the left-hand side in the attack for Mindel. And uh, Mindel, of course, running from right to left on your screens. So we're on the grandstand side. This is Marinelle Joanne throwing in now, trying to find Tegan McWilliam. She does. Tegan gets a nice bounce in the back from Pritzard Davies. And the ball fortuitously falls for her. So she'll put it down here towards the halfway line as we come up to the uh, halfway mark of the 43rd minute of this round seven match. So Cassie McWilliam with a throw in. Good strong throw finds Hannah Garland. Hannah Garland lets it run through her legs to Matilda Carter. And uh, Matilda Carter to Marinelle. And that collision there on the ball results in Casarina having possession. Just in the miss of again, just all the time in the world, always waits for someone in a better position. This time it was Larissa Rawn, but Hannah Garland got in there and made it difficult for her, but still remains with Casarina. The Rowdy's on the ball in the midfield. Fulton calls for it, gets it. This time Carter gets in front of her. That's the sort of play Carter can do. Always on the ball. Now we have a race on. Annabelle Kivett, number 16, up against Lisa Beakley. Lisa falls over. Annabelle's looking for someone to pass it to. Desperately looking for someone to pass it to. Now she's on it. She runs through. She's still on the ball. Still on the ball. She'll have a shot. Oh, some great work from her. And that left foot shot, that last one straight. And on the money. Again, wasn't her preferred side. But again, just that desire to keep going and win it. And again, created that opportunity for herself. We spoke about her, Bruce. She, she's, she's that player that's got that X factor. And when you give her time and space, especially in the, in the opposition half, she'll punish you. And she was unlucky not to get onto the score sheet there. Yeah, and you're right, John. The X factor is that, you know, just that left footer then, un not preferred side. That was hard, you know. And it, it brought out a good save from Shana Edwards. All right, corner kick comes in from Kirby. Nice one. Got plenty of weight. Falls at Reeves' feet. But then comes away through an advancing Casarina defender. Whistle goes up to the ref's mouth and out comes a bit of air and a bit of whistle. So, end of the first half. Casarina will go into, if we had sheds at the moment, we're still in COVID-19 restrictions. They'll stay on the field of play, but they have a 1-0 scoreline over Mendel Aces. Really entertaining game of football. We'll come back and uh, have a, a little pick apart of that half. Uh, maybe look at some highlights and um, talk to John Tamboris, the technical director here in Football Northern Territory, about what he liked and what he'd like to see from each of the teams after this short break.
That's no, it. she had to get the, had to get to her fist onto that, and she did. Yep. And now we're on the other side of the pitch, and we've gone three v three. So it's end to end at the moment. It is. It's uh, currently this match is between first and third. Mindel leading the table in the women's Premier League. Looking for someone to pass it on to get to Pritchard Davies goes back again. She'll go back again. This time to Bleakley. Good pressure from Tegan McWilliam. Pressure's still there. It's that transition when, you know, when Mindel go forward is having less numbers at the back. So you've got to give and you've got to take some. So <laughs> We'll see how that plays it's out. Around the, coming up to the 18th minute mark, this is um, round seven. So Mindel Aces are Very a leading young. selfish player. And Jesse Newcomb's in there, number 17. This time Davies was thinking of a shot. And Ruan will have a go, and she does. Only as far as Missop. This ball's just ricocheting off all the players. Kenya on a lovely way from Alanda. That's Ridley on the ball then. She's just been arrogant, just pushed right through there and made a, an opportunity for this raid from Kazarina. In first time shot, just missed by Newcomb, but she won't, she'll have a go. And Leander does, number 14. For just obviously no one there to finish. Yeah. There's a, uh, again, sure up the top. There's a lovely shot. That's Arrigan, is it? Yes, it is. Yep. Looks like it is, number 11. Well, and Bleakley on the run again. This will be going on all night between her and 16, Annabelle Kivett. A nice little return back, gain a few more metres. The ball again. So Hannah Garland and a race in Fulton. Fulton wins that one and puts it out of play. And when you're coaching a team and you're sitting in the technical area and you see these opportunities, you know, is, is it... With uh, the left footer, the king of the left foot, Cassie McWilliam comes in, solid as ever, puts the ball over, charters onto it. Carter got the foot toss, a nice little inside step. Here we go. This is a lovely foot race. And Joanne's on the ball, takes a shot early. Hands on. She's, um, if she's not Young. 14, she's y just 15. Youngest. And, you know, just incredible energy. So this will be uh, McWilliam in with uh, Newcomb. Newcomb wins that one, puts the ball through. But Kirby's going to clean it up for Mindel. Well, in the end, Marinelle goes ahead. Here's the foot race. Joanne on the inside, but this time Courtney Wilson there first, number two for Casarina. For Rachel Joanne in the back there, referee's okay with it. So nice play from Lisa Bleakley and Stan. Referee hasn't seen it yet. We'll pull the game up in a minute. Annabelle on a run, and Lisa Bleakley cleans up. Fantastic footballers here in Darwin. Let's see what happens here. It'll come off. No. This lovely work by Cassie McWilliam. That's so good. To do that, out of that back corner, win the ball. Nadia Yelly come out of there. Fulton on the ball now. That's a nice ball. Plenty of space here. Marinelle goes into it. We're back in play. This is Kirby on the ball here. Fulton in with a nice, decisive, decisive tap. Pritchard Davies puts a lovely ball through to Missile. This will be dangerous. Marinelle, Joanne on the middle. Missile will have the first time shot and does. Great save from Shaw. Strikers up front. Yep. So second striker. Yeah. Still on the ball. He's going to have a shot now. After one from Pritchard Davies. Now Rachel and Nadia. Nadia Ellie there first. She goes to Shana, the keeper. Keeper puts it out. Again, well read by Nadia. Again. Leaders of the table in the Women's Premier League. And that's a shot from one of their players. It's over the... Oh, just nice hands. Here's a rebound. That could be dangerous, but Nadia Valley's there first. Puts it out of play. She does. Hannah Garland on the ball. Nice tackle, but Fulton comes out the better off with that one. And scurries away into the midfield. Chased by Carter. Yeah, tried and, that uh, Courtney Wilson with that through ball to the player we were just talking about, Fulton, who just has done 30 Ks already in this match. <laughs> Here's a shot. Oh, it looks like, like football it. stadium. We're on Larrakia Nation. I want to thank the elders, past, present, and those emerging. For the 6 o'clock kickoff, we'll have the NT Yappers taking on our select side from Darwin in the women's game. Uh, and there'll be a welcome to country, of course, from, uh, for us to be at Larrakia and playing on their... Like for the women's and for the men's yeah, game. Yeah, thank you. I think so, too. Um, and, of course, all brought to you on the NITV network and uh, SBS and the World Game, as well, as well as FNT TV and FFA Digital. Here's a run from Kivett. This is beautiful balance from her. And uh, Wilson gets in there and delays it, but only far as Reeve. Reeve on the ball now. What will she do? She puts it back in, but only as far as Fulton, unfortunately. And that's been uh, diffused by 
Casarina. Uh, really dangerous there for Mindel John, but uh, in the end... No, they've got those dangerous players, Mindel, where they can change a game in the, in the blink of an eye. So, and Casarina will be aware of that. So good to see. Um, who else but uh, number seven, Jacintha Misob. Misob goes to Alanda Kenyai. Can you reach a two? Right, we're in half time here in the Women's Premier League here at Darwin Football Stadium. It's a beautiful Friday night, dry season. Our score is 1-0 in favour of Casarina. It's been a game that's gone from end to end. No one really had the ascendancy. Uh, it was a really well taken opportunity by Aragon. Fall, fall to her feet, uh, came off the keeper and she just put it away with no, no hesitation whatsoever. We've had a couple of near misses or near chances depending on your point of view. We're neutrals of course, John. But a couple of both of those at either end. So the scores could have been 2-1, two, 2-all. Two but uh, some really good football. Went very quick that 45 minutes. Uh, we're in the break now. John, you saw some exciting stuff out from both teams. What are you saying to Casarina in the Casarina coaching area? Again, keep doing what they're doing. Um, again, they'll be very, very happy with their first half. I think uh, what Casarina are doing is they're trying to force and create chances. Um, obviously, they're playing with three across the back, and obviously, they've overloaded with their wingers getting forward as well. So you looked at the sense of Misob getting forward and creating um, uh, opportunities for their team. So I think they'll be asking for a bit more of the same. Uh, defensively, they've been quite sound as well. I mean, you've got Lely in the back that's really controlling things at the back at the moment. So in terms of where Casarina are at the moment, they should be really happy. So that's Casarina. You also mentioned Mindel there. There were opportunities for them against that defensive three that Casarina set up. It hasn't really been taken. There's a couple of times where Annabelle's got free, but it seemed to be more individual effort from her than a, a plan. Do you think their coach, Dave McWilliam, will be focusing on the defensive setup of Casarina in the second half? And again, we spoke about it before, you know, they, they've got that three across the back, which allows uh, Mindel, who are playing with three up front, to, to push them up high. And if, if Mindel get that transition quickly, they can create a lot of problems because it's sometimes 3v3. And if you get your fullbacks to get forward as well, which Mindel are trying to do towards the, the last part of the, in the first half, uh, that could be a 5v3. So my, I think Dave's message would be, hey, can we look to try and get our wing, wingers up, 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 up high as much as we can and get our fullbacks pressing on as well to support our wingers in, when we're going into that forward line? 
And John, you, you thought you were looking forward to the game, and has it has it reached the potentials and the and the levels that you thought it would? Because it seems to be one of those games that's about to explode any minute. It is, and, and that's the good about, and that's the best thing about the women's Premier League. You know, it, it it could it could go quiet, and then all of a sudden, bang bang, it's things start to happen, and that's why we love watching it. So, in terms of both teams now, I think Mindy will come out second half and have a really crack at it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and fairy animals, make sure that half time we come back and we see that and we see whether or not that uh, Mindel take up that opportunity that John Tamboris, our expert analyst, has just mentioned. All to Kazarina, stay strong, stay the way they played and maintain this 1 0 scoreline. Uh, my name is Bruce Stalder. Thank you for joining us. This is the Women's Premier League Round 7 here in Darwin. This is Larrakia Park, Darwin Football Stadium. We'll be back with this second half with great anticipation after this. Well, welcome back. This is a half we're really looking forward to. We're going to have a couple of subs to get it underway. So Kazarina will take the opportunity to put Jade Roberts out there for Jesse Newcomb. And they'll also, that's uh, Audrey Suarez, number 10, gone out for y Yolanda Canyon. So 14, Yolanda off, 17, Jesse off. And their replacements are two experienced players. And you mentioned in the lead up to this one about the depth at Kazarina. There's no better example than what just happened then. Two really good quality players came off. Two very experienced players, hard campaigners back on. Let's get this game underway. Referee looks at his watch and blows us. Goes to Cassie McWilliam and takes the left footer and puts it to the player that we've mentioned has the X factor in Annabelle Kivett. Right, John, we're into um, a second half that has the potential, as we were saying in the uh, half time there, to produce anything at any time from anywhere. <laughs> so uh, strap it in. You just don't know quality across the park and we just saw them with some subs uh, how deep Kazarina go and you got to remember that their captain and I guess the heart and soul of the team uh, Maria Musso is out with a first time she's ever been really injured in a career uh, she's down there and of course she's here tonight uh, barking out enthusiasm from the technical area but uh, yeah she's recovering from an injury and as I said seldom injured in her career again we wish her a speedy recovery but again you know we talk about you know, Maria Musa, what she brings to the Casarina team. But we, talk, we speak about depth and we talk about squads and squads win you premierships, squads win you championships, not, not obviously your, your starting 11. So, um, and you can see with Casarina this year, the way they've recruited and the team they've got, um, they've got a very, very good squad. Yeah, and you're always, John, on, a, on about, you know, the bench, the 11, the subs, and then the squad. So they'll all be on display today. And there's a lovely one from Hannah Garland. There should have been someone onto that. They're now getting there, Mindel. Matilda Carter will put this back in, right foot over the top. And that falls for Hannah Garland, takes it. She would have liked that again. But that's uh, enterprising stuff already for Mindel early on. Um, but look, you've been in that situation with Hannah where you, yeah, you would have, you had your time at the front, where you, you think you're, you're, gonna about, you're about to be attacked and, and you know, put down and press her all over you and you, you know, she could have had another five seconds there. Again, yeah, I think she didn't realise how much time she no, really did no, have. She could have taken another do. three or four touches there. You think so someone's going to come straight in I think in she'd be you. disappointed with that effort, but again, um, you know, you could see Mindel's intention straight away, they're, they're going to... They're going to attack. That's what you said. You said look out for that, and that's what we're seeing in the first um, two minutes of this restart uh, of this Round 7 match. It's uh, Women's Premier League here at Darwin Football Stadium, and this time running right to left on your screens, wherever you may be. Uh, Kazarina Football Club in their black and white check. They're running from right to left. Currently sitting third on the table, and uh, up against the table leaders.
And there's been a sub too for um, Mendel, which was missed by my good self. Call me nickname Missing Things. So that was uh, the youngster out there. Oh, God, I always say the youngster, but this is a very young one. Uh, Kiara Bernard, number four. She's come on for Mendel, and she's replaced uh, Ridley. Michaela Ridley, I think, and playing here on the right-hand side. Am I right? Yes, it looks like she is. Yep. She's on the ball now with a throw, and she's going to go to Reeve, who seems to have moved in the midfield now. Let's just see where she ends up. So it looks like Kirby, McWilliam, Marinelle, Joanne on the left, and uh, the sub, Kiara Bernard, will be on the right back position. She's got the throw in now. Here she goes. Throws it down, trying to find Tegan McWilliam. It'll come off uh, one of the uh, subs for Casarina and Autry Suarez. Here's one for the stats people. Kiara Bernard's first four touches were throw-ins. All right, Reeve putting the ball across in a dangerous place. McWilliam never panicked. This time, Richards is on the ball. And Richard turns in. Reeves there again. Sorry, um, McWilliam's there again. Now Reeves there. And puts her left foot to that and the roll out on the uh, North Crest scoreboard side of Lower Kia Park, North, uh, Darwin Football Stadium. This is the main field. This is where we'll feature Wednesday night's uh, Indigenous Football Showcase as part of NATO Week and the celebrations of Indigenous culture and their peoples. Um, and uh, it'll be a great night for First Nations as well as uh, anyone who loves football. Get down here and see it. Absolutely free to get in. Gates open around 5.30. Uh, love to see you here. Be lots on, lots to do. And, of course, those showcase Games and matches, 6 o'clock and then 8 o'clock for the men. That ball will run over for a corner. Everyone retreats back into the box, gets set for their defensive patterns. In the case of Casarina, they're offensive. And this ball will be taken by, it looks like, uh, I think, Larissa Rawn. We'll put a right footer in. Interesting to see that Casarina's... Uh, changed tactics in the second half. They've gone with a four across the back now. Okay. Yep. So Pritchard Davies pressure but gets the ball away. Still Missop looks across. This player's got too much time. It just pushed past her enough but she's still going to turn in on a shot. But good work from uh, Annabelle Kivett. That's what you want to see from your strikers. Good defensive work. There could be a counter on here. If Tegan McWilliam can get this ball away, she's still on her feet. She will go to her eventually. Now she does. But good work from Wilson. Good pressure from her. Still at it, Wilson. She, uh, she absolutely made sure that that wasn't as easy as it could have been for Mendel. So good work from her. This is Beakley running back. She's going to go to the sideline. No, she turns it back inside. And he finds Annabelle. Annabelle on the ball still. Goes to her knees. Ball still going. Bernard puts the ball forward. And Rachel Juan attempting there to get it through for Mindel. So we're talking a lot about the midfield and some of the attacking three here for Mindel. And the ball's not being really progressed that far forward. Right, she's on the ball now. Is the dangerous Kivitz. She's still on the ball. And uh, Fulton in there. Timely intervention from her, and that brings it to an end. Tegan McWilliams still on the ball. She'll go around. Putting a body and throwing everything at it. Comes to Reeve, puts it over. Uh, and the keeper. Off the line quickly, Shana Edwards. And uh, brings that to an end. Pritchard Davies and Matilda Carter have been at it all night and continues at it in the second half. This is the uh, Audrey Soares. Audrey puts the ball through. And uh, McWilliam will pick that up. That's Cassie McWilliam. Only as far as Courtney Wilson. Wilson tries to thread that through to miss up, but uh, didn't get there. Reeve in the middle, bouncing around. Tegan McWilliam as well. That's a confident ball through from, uh, I think, Larissa Rawn. And Michaela Shaw onto it. Nice right footer from her. Audrey Suarez, great stop. First touch. Her and Garland will be battling for this. And Fulton turns it in, gives herself plenty of time and space. Looks up, find Pritchard Davies. Nice play from Casarina then. That nice five pull passes there, John. Yeah, Lovely work. Yeah, again, they're very, very patient when they build up and when they play. So, again, it's not really direct 
but um, direct in terms of being patient, direct. Yeah. So and possession based. Exactly right. So really good to see Casarina putting the board down, stringing some passes together and trying to get into their front third. Really yeah. good to watch. I mean, it was nice. Okay, McWilliam on the ball. She's going to go back. She goes back to uh, Kirby. Kirby looks up and will probably go back to McWilliams. He does do that. One, two with her and Kirby. Now it's a nice well work for Mindel. Got out of there. Well played. You'd like that as a technical director. Uh, maybe not that pass, but everything else before it. So Marinelle's going to have to get back. Juan, she's jogging back now. She'll have to get back quicker. He needs to get onto that number 12. Tegan William McWilliam gets in there. Slows them down. Great work from her. Still getting a second and third effort from her. Ball now comes into a very dangerous place for Mindel. Everyone holds off a little. Fulton comes in, puts one in. Bernard's on it. Bernard, a nice Carter interception. The Carter came in early. Could have been dangerous. Bernard chases. Arrogan puts one in. It's, uh, it's gone to miss off. This is dangerous. She gets chance on this. She turns on the left foot. She'll have a go when she does. She had the first opportunity to go right foot. Let the defenders run past the turn back on the inside and put a nice left foot pass on the left-hand side of the keeper. So that's two to Casarina in the uh, 53rd minute, coming up to 54, actually. And, the, and great lead-up work from Aragon again. We spoke about her defensively, what she did in the first half, and obviously scoring in the first half. And now she's provided an assist for, for, for Missob. So uh, great play from the youngster. Yeah, not a bad evening's work when you've got a, a lovely goal like that and then a nice assist like that. And, then, you know, you were talking, John, also about Aragon's work off the ball, getting back, doing some defensive work. And yeah, no, exciting prospect. And, again, another kid in the NT select side too, which is fantastic. Suarez the sub on the ball now. Carter's got to get past her and doesn't. Throws the ball in. Only Suarez Carter again. Back to Reeve. Pressure now coming from Garland. And uh, Rachel has a shot from some distance. First time. Not really where she wanted it, but she'll, she'll take that. Nice work from Kirby. Showing all her skills and determination. Finds Marinelle Juan. She looks up, tries to thread that ball between two defenders and hopefully trying to get Annabelle Kivett, but that's not going to happen. Awesome. Uber Eats has just dropped in with something for our technical director. And John Tavares, Tamboris, will now have a nice coffee. Great franchise, that one owned by John Dean, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, good. always. <laughs> gotta love it. <laughs> you gotta love it. Yeah, that's the that's his positioning statement. You gotta love it. Um, hope you enjoy your coffee. Right, we're in the uh, 56 minutes shortly. This is uh, round seven of the Women's Premier League here in Darwin. We're in Lower Kia Park, Darwin Football Stadium, and we're in uh, a two-nil scoreline in favour of Casarina. Aragon, who we've mentioned a couple of times, some lovely work from her again. Goes to um, Roberts. Goes across to Miss Ops. She will have a shot from there. Does. Kirby, she'll have another one on the left foot if you don't watch her. This time, that's misplaced. Arrigan on it, turns in. Left foot shot. Hits the... And Miss Ob running through. As every good defender should do, mate. A couple of passes there. A couple of kicks went astray. Hit off the post, came back. And what she did, followed through. Everything you want your striker to do. Followed the ball through. So one for Miss Ob. Gives her a brace now. And uh, everyone else had a chance in there as well. But uh, she's so dangerous on the right and left foot. Number seven, just think the miss of for Casarina. That's a 3 0 scoreline now in the 56th minute. Two goals come very quickly. Exactly, and we spoke about you know what message would would the Casarina coaching staff have for their for their team in the second half, and we spoke about it. You know, do the same. They were, they were good in the first half, and obviously they've got their reward now. They've changed the dynamics in terms of how they've set up. And obviously they've got a lot of joy from it in the second half. That's what you love about our game too, John. It can be like three seconds, five seconds, it's really literally two minutes and it's just suddenly 3-0. And, and Mindel haven't been bad. They just haven't, and they haven't been off the pace, but they just have had two errors and now they have a chance to get it back. Hannah Garland has a shot from range. That deflects off. 
Rachel Jawan in there as she should, doing what Jacintha Missop did at the other end, following off a ball that's come off the keeper. In the case of the goal that came off the goal posts. But yeah, no good football from both teams there. Bernard puts the ball across, but only as far as Wilson. Wilson looks up and now finds Jacintha Missop, who's uh, had maybe another opportunity, but it's intercepted by Kirby. And the captain puts it back to her keeper, and Shaw puts a right boot to that with some force. And it's sped across the pitch and over the goal line on the north crest side of the scoreboard. So it looks like Wilson's got the ball, number two. Puts it across on his far as McWilliam. Cassie, that is. And uh, Tegan McWilliam in there, her twin sister, trying to close down Fulton. It's not easy. Fulton gets that pass away again. Kirby on the ball. And uh, unfortunately, she only found Fulton. Fulton now tries to put Larissa Rawn into attack. And Kirby has to come back and defend, but only as far as a rebounding ball off uh, Missob. Tegan McWilliam on it now. Stands to the ground, but unfortunately Fulton takes an unintentional kick there. Pulls out. And uh, Fulton will uh, now move away gingerly. But she's a tough player. She'll keep on running and keep on doing those Ks. She surely does five or six Ks more than any other player out there. Nice bit of sportsmanship between her and Teague McWilliam. The way the gay set, Pritchard Davies moves in. Nice right footer. That's a lovely ball. Dangerous ball. Kiara Bernard in there. Got it out of there. Now Matilda Carter. Matilda's looking for someone to go to. Finds Annabelle Kivett. That's a nice pass. But again, closing down the space as Kezarina have done all day, John. Yeah, and Don't again, give Mindle much time, do they? All space. Anyhow, let's just see what happens. Something here. Rachel Jawan goes to Hannah Garland. Hannah Garland comes into Suarez, goes through Suarez. They're battling for it. But ball still with Hannah Garland. Great determination from her. The poor thing's going to run over that ball. So that deserved better for her. Great third, fourth, and fifth effort. Yeah, John was saying there, the Casarina's just closing Mindle down. I think what Casarina have done really well is they've got numbers behind the ball. So once they do slip up on one tackle, they've got another player to come in and, and, and make that crucial tackle. We, we saw with, um, you know, the, the defenders today, once, a, you know, Annabelle would beat a player, there was another player, and then there was another player, so forth. So in terms of the way they, they've defended today, they've, they've defended in packs, yep. and they've, they've, they've done very, very well with it. Agreed. Now, um, that's um, Larissa Rawn coming off number eight. She got in a good uh, 60 minutes. She's coming back from injury, so the club and her will be very happy with the time they got in her legs. And to your point about depth, they've gone now to number 16, which is Nikki Kalidis. Uh, Nikki's in our squad for the women's team. That's correct, and yep. now she's coming on as a uh, third sub with 30 minutes to go. And they're giving her a rest as we lead up to them a game on Wednesday night as well, clearly. Akira like Bernard on the ball then, puts it to Tegan McWilliam. Tegan turns in, but again, who's there? Fulton. She's been everywhere tonight, yep. and again... Going forward, defensively, she's, she's just that, uh, that player that just sits in front of the back four and distributes, and then obviously when caught upon, she's there in the defensive line. Yeah. So. You should call them McDonald's because they're everywhere, mate. <laughs> um, right, Tegan McWilliam on it. No, sorry, Cassie. Cassie goes back to Kirby. Kirby has a bit of space and time. What will she do? She goes right across to Kira Bernard. Kira's on the ball now. She's kept it. She's had two defensive. She'll get a call from the referee in her favour. Yeah, well ref there, obviously tried to play the advantage and... Didn't have any, didn't so, have any pulled so pulled it back. Yep. Great refereeing. Right, Kirby looking to make sure this is a black and yellow kit that it hits. Unfortunately doesn't, find Aragon. Trying to get over the back to Hannah Garland, that won't happen. So Bernard comes through, Matilda Carter's on the run now, turns. First shot on it, well done Carter. Good effort from her. Turn, quick, bang, had a shot, but uh, Shana Edwards, the keeper... Had that into control. Reeve on the ball now for Mindel. Puts the ball through. Too much power and it will run well and truly in front of Annabelle Kivett and then every other player over the line. Right, 62nd minute will come up in around seven minutes of this round three match. And we have a 3 0 scoreline for Kazarina over Mindel. And one we didn't expect, John, when I sat down with you at the beginning. I thought it'd be a little closer. I thought it was going to be a little bit closer again. And we're just looking at. At, at form and looking at talking about Mindel now. Yep. You know, last week's form wasn't the best form, so and they got away with a win. Obviously, they you know playing against a team like Casarina. If you don't perform, if you don't turn up on that day, they will punish you. And as today, you can see 
they've been punished on, on three occasions. Yep. But plenty of time, and I've seen this young side come back from a 3-0 deficit to get a win. Um, and so when we say plenty of time, there is around 27 minutes. That's an episode of a sitcom, mate. Plenty of time. Um, I want to thank our sponsors too, please. Rebel and Sharon and the team there for their support. Umbro, uh, also um, Northern Territory Government for their support. And, of course, Steel Line, uh, providing steel all over the Territory, service over and above. And uh, when you're doing construction, you need supplies, go to NTF, Construction Supply Specialist, here in the NT. That's where the ball heads towards their signage on the uh, scoreboard side. The Northcrest scoreboard. Tegan McWeem on the ball. That's good. She really needs to be the player it's thrown to. So it goes to her sister, Cassie McWeem. Cassie heads it to Tegan. Tegan turns, lovely little turn there. And now hopefully gets Mindel on a run. And Lisa Bleakley wins that, number six for Casarina. Comes back inside from her to Wilson. Wilson to Fulton, but only as far as Reeve. Reeve goes back to Rachel and uh, Matilda Carter onto there. You see what she wanted to do. She pushed the ball towards Helen Garland, but uh, too narrow, too, too narrow, fast. And I think she just, uh, just in terms of timing of the ball, I think she just put too much on it. Yep. But idea was right. Pritchard Davies off a Kirby kick, puts it in the air. Taking a Carter, she's on the ball again. She'll turn and run. But someone got a boot to it. One of those, I think it was Nikki Kalidis. AR seen an offside. So, John, we have the uh, NADOC Week Celebrations Football Showcase on Wednesday night. You've got your both squads. Hang on, we've got a run here from Jacinta Missob. She'll turn back as he goes back to... The sub, number 12, he, she puts her left foot to it and it'll go harmlessly over the centre post. Now, you said Monday won't be as uh, uh, a heavy a session as was Wednesday um, because they play on the weekend with their clubs and they train with their clubs as well. What do you, when you say not a heavier session, what, what do you actually do in, in those sort of situations? So in terms of, we talk about, obviously, we've taken into account load management as well. So yep. players will be playing with their clubs over the weekend. So we've got to look out for that. Obviously, there'll be... We're going to look at injuries as well, seeing if the players pull up injured or tight on that Monday. Right. But in terms of on that Monday session, a lot of it will be based on around shape, uh, in terms of how the team will, will, will be put out and so forth, and set pieces will, will be another one as okay. well. So they'll go through some set pieces, um, a bit of shape, and then there'll be, uh, obviously, recovery, ready for game day on Wednesday. Okay. And then what do you want your players to do on the Tuesday and the Wednesday before the game? So we, we speak about, you know, looking after your body. You know, you, yep. you look after your body, your body will look after you. So that recovery time that they're going to get from that, from, say, Tuesday onwards uh, for getting ready for game day, obviously getting, getting the right sleep in, eating the right foods, refueling your body, getting it ready for match day on Wednesday night. And talking about bodies there, Rachel Joanne then, she's uh, only a little... Uh, thing, but um, just so strong and tells you went straight into Shana Edwards. Nice big collision there, John, between Shana and uh, Rachel, and she's still in there. Uh, brave, brave young player is Rachel Jawan, number nine for Mindel. Right, foot race. Suarez versus Garland. Garland gets there first, puts the ball in. Is it going to go into the side netting? Yes, it does. But good effort from Hannah, who also is coming back from injury as well. Didn't look very good last week, but uh, good to see her back on the pitch and in the starting side. And still out there at the 66-minute uh, mark. So exciting time for football, women's football in particular. Indigenous women's football and, of course, the World Cup coming our way. 23, New Zealand and Australia hosting the World Cup. 32 teams. And the only two teams we know about at the moment are the Matildas and the White Ferns. They're already there. Which 30 teams will join them? We'll find out over the next three years. Okay, Hannah Garland again comes on it. Right footer. She'll go towards goal. She'll turn it back in. She does. That's a lovely ball in. Comes off Nelly. Tegan McWilliam has a shot, but it was really closed down by Fulton. All the experience in the world from Fulton then. Didn't slide in. Didn't get stayed on her feet. Just made Tegan have to stretch. Uh, and we talk about Fulton, what she brings, that experience, that's that X factor as well in terms of the Casarina team. And when you look at her, she, she seems so, you know, 
in, especially going into tackles, she's one of those players that won't go in. She'll go all for the ball, which is great to see. Um, no malice in her tackles. And if she's going to go 50-50, nine times out of ten, she's going to come out a winner. Yeah, that's absolutely. And you saw a great case of it then. Didn't have to do much, but just enough to put Teague and McWilliam off. Yeah, a nice enterprising couple of minutes from Mindel there. Didn't get a goal. A couple of times down towards goal. We'll see what happens. Kirby, very solid at the back, gets her head to that. And Tilda Carter working hard in the midfield. This ball ricochets off. It's now a race down this side. There'll be two Mindels there. And again, the calm, composed figure of number 13, Cassie McWilliam there first. And she just puts it out of goal, out of, out of um, over the goal line. Over the sideline, sorry. She's very calm and uh, established defender is Cassie McWilliam. Right, that'll come off Nikki Kalita, so it'll be a goal kick. We'll have a sub here at the same time. So he'll come from the field. Cassie Reeve runs off. So she'll come off number 14. And 10 will go on. And 10 is Jade Bates. So Jade will go into uh, the right wing position, number 10, for Mendel, Jane Bates. So Jade, ready to go. Comes off Cassie McWilliam, goes to the midfield. Matilda Carter wins that one. But uh, Wilson gets there first. Kalita's showing some nice skills. Number 16, sub for Kazarina, pushes it wide to Wilson. Annabelle Kivett comes back and does some good pressing work. More pressing work again this time from Hayana Garland. Just watched, switched, swatched. Isn't that a watch? Uh, switched to the um, uh, Northcrest scoreboard side. So she's on the left-hand side for Mindel in their attacking raids from this moment on. Been up and down and menacing on the right, but now on the left. Right, coming up to the 70-minute mark in around 30 seconds, that'll give 20 minutes for Mindel to do some catch-up. That ball's gone over the Port Darwin signage and run over into the open area to the perimeter fence. So we have a new ball in play. Wilson picks it up, throws it in. That's a lovely ball that gets fine. Pritchard Davies is just hanging around dangerously as usual. This is coming out. So Bates versus Suarez. Good work from young Jade. Ball runs out off her, but good effort. Audrey Suarez on the ball now. Over the top. Matilda Carter there. Matilda Carter and Pritchard Davies <laughs> sort of shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, it's been game. a great battle today. Yeah. Obviously experience there versus youth. Yep. And hard to tell them apart, to be honest, in terms of who's got over one another. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's... Um, they both had their moments in the game, which is good to see. Yeah. Wholehearted players. You never see them dropping heads. You never see them off the ball. They're always working. And in this case, staying close to each other uh, for the last five minutes here. Okay, Missop opens it up, puts a right foot through. It's a good ball. Marinelle Juan onto it. And Marinelle plays it back to Cassie McWilliam. That's a lovely ball through. She is onside. Wilson. Good calm play from Wilson. Look oh, at that. Well done. Yeah. Experienced player. All the time in the world. And she's won for that effort and determination. A call from the referee her way. Young uh, Rachel Dewan. Thank you very much for your work there, John. Enjoy your uh, evening. I know you have to get away. You've got some important stuff to do, and I really appreciate giving you some time today, mate. Uh, always a pleasure, Bruce. And again, great great game again today, and looking forward to seeing some of these girls play on Wednesday night. Yep. So. Yep, and also we'll see you on Monday when you're taking them for a little run. Exactly. All so right, mate. looking forward to that. You go off and do what you've got to do. You've got some important stuff to do. So John Tamboros will leave us. Thank you, John. Enjoy Thank the rest you. of the evening. And I know you've got a lot of things to do, so go do them.
Jade Roberts putting some pressure on in there in the uh, grandstand corner. And as far as Missod, Missod now to Kalidas. Kalidas looks up, puts a lovely ball through, but again, great little defensive work from Annabelle Kivett. Uh, yeah, it's been pulled up there, Pritchard and Davies and Matilda Carter. How many times have we called those two together? All the time. Looks like we're going to have a sub here. Sub will be for Kazarina, it looks. Looks like uh, Nadia is coming from the pitch for Kazarina. Nadia Lelli, number five. Great little effort from her. She takes it from the field and she'll give her opportunity to uh, Ellie Missop, number 13. We'll go into that defensive role for Casarino. We have a 3-0 scoreline over Mindel Aces in the 73rd minute. This is round seven of the Women's Premier League at uh, Larrakia Park. Current table leaders, Mindel, are in trouble. 3-0 down against third place, Casarino. Let's see if they can get back. Here's an opportunity now. Annabelle Kivett, who is so quick on the ball, goes in there. Wilson gets in the way again. Still with Kivett. Kivett turns in. Nice double defensive play. Playing the advantage there, but great double defensive play from uh, Wilson and uh, Bleakley on Kivett. Just worked in tandem there. She had a lot of pace, Annabelle, but they just cornered her and then eventually dispossessed her. Cassie McWilliam up against. So that's Richards. Roberts, sorry. Jade Roberts has a shot. And this ball has gone over the goals, down the net, and will run out where it looks like Ellie Missob will come across to take this corner kick. A right footer, I would imagine. Fulton runs over for the short kick, but it's not going to be. It's a right loping kick, comes into the centre, and dangerous Annabelle. Sorry, Pritchard Davies onto that first time. Ball's deflected on its way through off a Mindel player, so we'll have a second corner kick, and Ellie Misob will come up the sub to take this one as well. She's wearing number 13 uh, on her back. Fulton again pulls a defensive player out, this time Teague McWilliam. On the opportunity for a short corner. Never going to take it, but does pull the player out. Ball now goes in. Hits the crossbar, bounces out and over. Michaela Shaw was never troubled. Was always there in case it did come on her side of the thing, but comes off the centre uh, uh, post and goes over play. So quickly restarted by the aforementioned Shaw. That's Marinelle. Marinelle Juan on the ball there. She finds Annabelle, goes back to... Cassie McWilliam goes to her sister Tegan. Tegan goes back to Jariah Kirby. And Kirby comes across, passes to uh, Kira Bernard. Kira goes forward looking for Jade Bates. Jade gets involved, but the ball only goes as far as a defender, in this case, Liz Elizabeth Missob. So he pushes forward. Nice one from uh, Jariah Kirby. Ball is with uh, Ellie Missob. She goes back to Suarez. So two subs there. Jade Bates, a substitute herself. Number 10 for Mindel involved. Fulton in there. And Fulton clears up. Goes across to the sub. Nikki Kalidas, number 16 for Casarina, who scurries across the pitch towards the Northcrest scoreboard. Uh, this is a nice win for Marinelle. They're onside. Marinelle's on the board. She looks up, puts a nice ball through, but it's just too short, too narrow, and goes to the keeper. The intention was right. Just wasn't able to execute it on this occasion. So Shana Edwards will put a big right foot to it. And uh, we know what she meant, but that's going to run out of play and a goal over the sideline. And they throw and will start. The player they call KB, Kiara Bernard on the ball there. She throws it in. Jade Bates and Tegan William. Tegan gets in front of them. Wholehearted effort from her as usual. And uh, she's trying uh, her hardest to keep that ball down there and does such. Well, virtually, it's coming in outside their technical area for Mindel. They're still with the ball. KB or Bernard with the ball. She throws it in, but only as far as a stack of Mindel players. Jade Roberts on the ball now, getting in front of Kirby. Nice battle between them. Cassie McWilliam has the ball. Cassie will come forward on a run, looking for someone to present themselves. No one's presenting. And so, therefore, gives Fulton time to get in there. 
Now Annabelle Kivett on the ball. Now she goes. Last minute pick up from Shana Edwards in the uh, 77th minute, coming up to the 32nd mark of that minute. Unfortunately, handball off Hannah Garland. Have to come back for a, a set thing. Pritchard Davies comes in. Puts a uh, right footer across to Liz. To see the missile this time. She's on the run. Jacinda goes inside, nice little turn on her, comes back in on left foot, as she can do with both feet. Good player. Finds Michaela Shaw on this occasion. Michaela will use the box and does that. Right footer, looking for space. Plenty of air on that. Good solid bounce. And as far as uh, nice play, nice idea anyhow from Carter. Went across to Wilson. Wilson got there first, now Annabelle Kivett, who was the intended target for that last ball. But some nice defensive work from number two, as there was from Marinelle Joan just then. She goes back to Annabelle, and gets a call from Carter. And Ellie Missop in there early, but it only falls at the feet of Kivett. And Annabelle has been effectively held on that right side, because we're in a defensive right side. by Courtney Wilson has had a really fine job there on the right back position for Casarina today. Good challenge for Missile, but it'll come off her and roll over the goal line. So in the 79th minute mark, we will have a goal kick. This time taken by Cassie McWilliam. Getting the last 10 and a bit minutes here. Mindle attempt to get back on the scoreboard. 3-0 is the score in favour of Ka uh, the Rowdies. Uh, Casarina side, they're running from right to left on your screens in the second half. They're in their traditional white and black check with the black socks. Had the better of this match, had three opportunities that they took so well. And a couple others that just didn't go to plan, but those three were really effectively taken. And there were two goals in a very short amount of time, which uh, has put this one beyond Mindel at this stage. We don't say it's definite, but with 10 minutes to go, they're going to have to get one on the goal. Cassie McWilliam on the ball. Comes back to Tegan. Tegan goes to the wing. Her and Nikki Kalidis in a nice little battle here. And the sub, Nikki Kalidis, will win that one. Pushes a, uh, and causes a throw in for Mindel. I want to thank uh, Sharon and the team at Rebel for their support of women's football. Great supporters of women's football are Rebel, Umbro, kit makers as well for their support. And good sports who we do a lot of work with and a lot of tandem events together with good sports. Okay, referee's seen something there. Goes the way of Casarina. KB or Bernard's on the ball now, number four, the sub. She puts it back to the Rowdies. Fulton will step over the ball and leave it there for Pritchard Davies to restart. She wants the team to push forward. She's waiting for that to happen. Referee's writing things in, a, in his book. Looking at his watch. I might have missed that. I don't think there was a yellow card there. There may have been. Don't know what he's writing. My apologies. Now he's ready. Jogs forward to the halfway line. He'll turn, face Pritchard Davies, and tells her to get underway, which she dutifully does. Moves in right footer. Trying to find Kalidas. Intervention from Carter early. So Fulton. And McWilliam, nice battle they've had all night as well. So Marinelle, Joanne on the ball now, throws it back to Cassie McWilliam. Comes forward. So Marinelle goes across to Cassie. Cassie needs someone to help her. She moves forward. She needs someone to run. Ball goes out of play, but... Uh, Good, patient work from number two, Courtney Wilson. Done it all night. Been very solid in that right back position. Referee wants to take him back to where 
the recommence it should have been, and that's where it is, right on the halfway line. Cassie McEwen with a long throw in finds Carter. Carter wins this one. Carter misplaces the first kick, goes back in again, this time Kalidas is earlier, and uh, a timely win for her. Goes back to Kirby. Kirby goes back to Shaw. Shaw comes in and puts a right footer, trying to find Marielle. Juan does, but pressure's already down on her. Time and space has been very, very in short supply tonight for Mindel, and that's because Casarina have just been at them all night. Right, let's just see if this one can go the way of Annabelle Kivett. No, it won't go out of play. Remains with Casarina. That's Wilson on the ball, number two. She'll come in and restart with a throw in in the 83rd minute. That ball threaded through quite a few players there. But William puts a boot to it in an optimistic attempt to put the ball in front of Kivett. It goes way too far and will roll harmlessly over the sideline. So there'll be a throw in. Wilson casually walks up to pick up the ball behind the Casarina commercial signage.
Well, welcome to Friday Night Football here. This is Darwin Football Stadium. Really excited to bring this clash. A team that needs a win tonight with Port Darwin up against Casarina, who, after a couple of slip-ups, have shown real class, real championship, real premierships credentials. So looking forward to see how these games go. It is a beautiful night for football here in Darwin. Larrakia Park looks good. The pitch looks good. It's a lovely temperature. Daniel, you're joining me, and you're going to give us some ex expert insights as we go through here. Uh, you're the coach of Mindel, so tonight you'll be watching some of the opposition players going around making notes. I know you, what you're like, um, but you won't let any opportunity go. But listen, tonight, you know, if you were in a side like Port Darwin, they have patches of good play, they have potential to win games, they just haven't got it yet. I'd be saying as a coach, it's only round seven. It'll come. What about yourself? What are you going to tell them? Yeah, absolutely, and you have to also look at the performance I had last week. I mean, I was on the receiving end of that. That's they, right. uh, they're, they're certainly picking up and they're developing as a team, but they had a hunger to them then, yep. and I'm just watching their warm-up tonight. They look like they've got that same hunger again, so I think we're in for a pretty good game tonight. Look, that's a really interesting thing. A couple of people come and do their expert analysis for me. They're always going, oh, the warm-up. You know, always watch the warm-up. It's so true. You can tell if they're on or they're in the shed, so to speak. So I look forward. I think, Dan, you're spot on here. I haven't seen much of Casarina, but th they can have slow starts. They, they can, they can. Uh, but, look, Port was out the change rooms about 10, 15 minutes before <laughs> Casarina. They were really on the pitch. They were fizzing around the ball. They were moving around. Um, there was lots of communication. Um, so I think, I think they're up for it tonight. And they've got a few new additions. We got to see them last week against us. So yeah. Look, that, that, team, that team's still changing. We haven't seen them at their full potential well, because they, they're constantly introducing new players. Yeah. No, that's a great point, Daniel. So I look forward to your expert uh, insights as we go through this match. My name is Bruce Stalder. We're on Football Northern Territory TV, also on the FFA digital channels. And, of course, we go around the Perform Network, which is a world-class and worldwide network. So you can be watching it anywhere. Daniel, I have had some funniest emails from the funniest places on the planet. And the reason I say they're funny is I'm going, where is this place? And one the other day was uh, Uzbekistan. And I know they're in there somewhere. I, I don't want to be rude to the Uzbekistanis, but <laughs> it was like... Right, okay, cool. And he knew my name and he knew the teams and his favourite team, guess what, his favourite team was your team. But he called it Mundle. But anyhow. Um, Mundle Aces. Yeah, I Mundle Aces. See it. I'll, I'll put it to Dave that we look at renaming the club. <laughs> Please do that. Uh, but it's great. We're going everywhere and it's really exciting to be. So thank you for your support. We'll be back with this game very shortly. We will see Port Darwin take on Casarina. Men's Premier League here in Darwin. Back shortly.
Well, welcome back. This is uh, Darwin Football Stadium on a beautiful night for Friday Night Football. Not a breeze in the air. The temperature's dropped down. A little bit of dew forming on the surface, so the ball will skip and scurry when they're passed and, and placing kicks. So really looking forward to this one. Uh, Port Darwin in the uh, claret and blue running from right to left on your screens up against our current premiers and champions in Casarina Football Club. Called the Rowdies. And the Port Darwin nickname is the Wharfies. My name is Bruce Stalder. We'll be bringing you live streaming of all the men's Premier League matches throughout 2020. Of course, the finals as well. And uh, again, one of the rare places in the country you can watch Premier League football. And uh, again, what's happened in Victoria. We feel for our friends and uh, the family in Victoria. We were back down in lockdown. It just shows you how fragile the world is in the COVID-19 situation. But here in Darwin and in all the territory, we still remain to be the safest place in the country. And uh, Roberto, the hair shoot number nine in the centre there for Port Darwin, on about to go on the ball there again. He's lively, couldn't play last week because he had to do some work. He works the drive through at McDonald's. Uh, no, he doesn't. Uh, but uh, he's out here tonight, so he's free of work, so he'll be free to play football. He's got an engine on him, he'll go all night. We're talking about number nine out there. Roberto Sickles, or Sickles. We've, we've actually just seen uh, 3,000 the first minute here by Port Darwin, so I think it's clear they're trying to make a statement early that they're not going to let Casarina walk through them here. Yep, let's just see how that plays out. Expert comments from Daniel on my right here tonight. And there's Jose, a player that's brought some real spark to Port Darwin. That player on the ball there now and wearing the armband has been a really great addition, played one game now. And his name is Ryan McAvoy. Look out for him. He'll sit in the midfield and distribute number 12 for the uh, Claret and Blue. Try to thread that pass through. This is uh, Mark Casemiro. Pace galore. And there's been a uh, self-inflicted injury. Well, not self-inflicted, club-inflicted injury. So the big man at the back's gone down. And that takes a lot to bring him down. Yeah, his teammate's, boot. his teammate's boot just flicked up and hit him in the, in the head there. Yeah. So he's down. Hope he's okay. Grace Lane, their physio and uh, sports trainer is out there with him. In good hands with Grace. But early in the game, 239, you'd hope he's okay, but he doesn't look good at all. And as I said, a really powerful player, very strong uh, and uh, very uh, tough. So Declan O'Shea on the pitch at the moment is coming from the pitch. I'll do some work on him, hopefully get him back. I don't know if it's a cork or I think he, or I think he received a stray boot from his own player. And the player in, in question is the one on the ball now, throws it in. Referee didn't like that. At this level, throwing wasn't correct. We're back at mini ruse. Okay, now, number three, Seb Smith throws back to uh, Jari Van Lingen. He goes across to the midfield where a player will pop up all day, Curtis Smith, on the ball there. Curtis is going to have a battle all day with uh, McAvoy. So Jari goes across. And James Hamilton, who's safe as ever, gets him going on the left-hand side. That is Curtis. That is Coombe on the ball now, who will be dangerous. That's a lovely ball through. If he's got time and place, he does. He turns on the right foot. He'll have a shot. Of course he will. That's Daniel Marimba. So we've come down both flanks, left and right, Casarina, uh, Daniel. There doesn't seem to be a preference for either. And when you look what's on the end of them, Daniel on this side and Coombe on the other side, nice place to end up. Yeah, yeah, it is, and that was that was a well-weighted ball over the top there, and uh, Daniel did well to get a shot off. I thought once he let that ball bounce that uh, we weren't going to see a shot there, but he did. He got it out from under his feet and just missed the top right up right there. But he got targets on both the flanks. They got plenty of pace, and they, they're not afraid to have a go. So a good ball in from Coombe. And the youngster is on the uh, Northcrest scoreboard side. That's Jose, number seven, for Port Darwin. Now McAvoy in the middle there, wins that ball. 
That's a very dangerous play from the youngster from Port Darwin. Referee lets it go. Didn't even play advantage. Ball comes back to Casarina's defensive line where Jose shows some of his skills, but uh, only as far as a Casarina defender. So Ryan Newell on the ball now. Dangerous player for them. Casemiro picks up as well. Defensive onto him. All the ball from Dylan. So Dylan Quinn with that win in that defensive play for the Claret and Blue. He's wearing number four. He's going to centre back to position tonight where he'll join Terry Fanning, number 19. Terry is one of the oldest players playing in the Premier League. He had a fantastic game last week against Mindel. Terry Fanning, so wearing number 19 in the central defensive role for Port Darwin tonight. Once again, two weeks in a row. Ryan Newell on the ball, looks up, goes wide. Hamilton on the overstretch foot race. Hamilton's going to have to the ball. The referee's okay with it. He turns in, puts the ball in and the play I talked about before Dylan in there early to save that one. Quinn, well played. Great keeper in Dominic Price in the uh, custodial role again. He'll do the right things by the club all night and this team. Dominic Price, look out for him, number one. There he is on the ball now with the right footer. As high as the stars. It'll come down to Roberto. But Tran is on the back of that. And Tran Quinlan. So Quinlan puts it across to Jari. Finds Marimba. Seb Smith on the overlap. He ignores him. Goes into Coombe. Coombe's on the ball. And great work from the keeper. Really assured work from Dominic Price. What did you see there, Daniel? I think that was very well kept. He's come out, he's seen it coming, and he, he's gone out slide. He's made his body pretty big well on the grounds, and he just managed to get there before he got the shot off there from Coombe. And as a keeper, you've got to make that decision. You go or you don't go, but when you do, you go. And yeah, that was a good example of it. You go with certainty, which is exactly what he's, what he's done there. And watching uh, Price play his last few games, when he goes, he really goes, regardless of who's there. Yeah, great little uh, uh, goalkeeper. Not the tallest keeper in the competition, but, geez, he's I'd, dynamic. I'd put money on him being the bravest, that's for sure. Yeah. I've seen him really take out a few players, um, and that sticks with you. If you see a goalkeeper with that sort of confidence coming out, uh, you know he's not going to pull out. Yep. You, that sticks with you. Right, well, it looks like there's a major move here, which is a disappointing one for poor Darwin. It looks like the big fellow, Declan O'Shea, is not going to come back on. So the sub is Andrew Savis, number 11. So Andrew will move out. That's actually Andrew's uh, club debut here for yeah, Port, Port Darwin. Darwin. Right. Very true. Uh, young teacher now, his first year of teaching. And um, enjoying his time in the classroom, but now a different sort of classroom. Here on Larrakia Park, main field, Darwin Football Stadium. Mr Quinn, I liked his idea, didn't mean it. Just one of those brain explosions that they say. Right, we'll get started. Ball's left. Again, Hamilton on the roll. Trying to find Coombe. Does Coombe gets it sort of as a unintentionally gets it. Quinlan Tran now got to try and keep Roberto in check. He does that. Ryan Newell on the ball goes across to Marimba. Marimba has space and time. But to, good work from McAvoy, the captain from uh, Port Darwin. McAvoy on the ball again. Nice, calm play there. Savas on it again. Goes wide. And Jose picks up. Jose still on the run. Great release. So Ramanda Jose puts the ball through. But unfortunately offside are uh, Port Darwin. Right, Braden, the keeper. Paul Casarina plays it back into play. Braden McLennan, young Indigenous. Northern Territory footballer will feature on Wednesday night in a NAIDOC showcase of Indigenous football. Make sure you come down free of charge. Nothing at all to get in through the gate. And there'll be a great night of entertainment. Two fantastic games of football and plenty of other stuff to do on the night as well. Wednesday next week here at Larrakia Park. So Quinlan Tran on the ball, patiently playing out from the back. Goes to Hamilton. Hamilton pushes it right back to the aforementioned Braden. McLennan, and he goes across to Jari Van Lingren. He goes to Seb Smith. Smith inside to Ryan Newell. Good pressure and time from Savas. Savas in that pressure enables the ball to come to Quinn. 
Uh, sorry, not to Quinn. Who is it? 17. So that's uh, Oakland. Make a boy. So Oakland, first time we saw him was last week as well. So another strong addition to the Port Darwin side. Ball goes across to Newell. Newell on the ball now. Goes right to Tran. Again, Casarino will do this. They'll calmly play out from the back. They'll do it in a measured way. And you're just going to have to press and, be, and keep on pressing. So here goes Oakland with the ball forward to a player that's had plenty of impact. And that's Endry Profiti. And this time his ball only finds a Casarino player in Curtis. Uh, nice work from Terry Fanning to clean that up. Yeah, that was an assertive tackle there. Port Darwin a court with quite a, quite a number of players still high up the pitch there. Um, so they could have been quite easily exposed. So, Daniel, what are you seeing? You're seeing as you thought it would play out in the first 10 minutes? Oh, look, I'm, I'm seeing Port Darwin trying not to give Casarina time on the ball, uh, and, and it is working, but it means that they're committing a lot of players to the press. Yep. Um, and just watching Mark Casemiro, he's just drifting off the centre-backs, the shoulders of the two centre-backs. So when you're pressing like that, you've got to press as a whole team, um, yep. and you've got to be cautious at all times of someone like him drifting off the back, um, because if the press isn't done right, it might create space that can be exploited against you. And Romando Jose on the ball with uh, Roberto Sickles. He goes forward, Roberto, he put a left footer in, he does, but some good work from Seb Smith came back at him again and kept this ball out of the danger zone where it still remains with Casarina. Referee has said, no, the assistant referee has seen that ball go over the goal line, so we will have a, a corner kick. And this one will be taken by... Uh, Jose and Raimundo moves in be a right footer he places the ball both hands raised indicating to his team he's on his way he'll drop his hands and move in puts it in it's a lower trajectory than he wanted didn't get much height on that at all and was easily cleared up by the defence from uh, Casarino. There's a breakaway here now. Foot race between Marimba and Fanning. And Fanning, Terry Fannin has won that one. Savas in the ball in the midfield. Nice play from Savas. McAvoy again, captain. Goes to Raimondo, Jose. Jose looks up, tries to find Roberto. Does. Roberto wants it back but won't get it because this ball's gone through to Savas on the run. Savas puts it across. It goes into Oakland. Oakland has a hand to go across. This is Enfredi. He goes in shot. It's a goal. And it's in. It is a goal. And a player I mentioned earlier on, so dangerous as he drifts in and out. That's Andre Profiti, number 14. And he puts that past Brandon McLennan, Braden McLennan. And we have a 1 0 scoreline to Port Darwin. That'll do a great, great amount of stuff for their confidence. They haven't, from my memory this season, had an early goal and had the advantage. No, I think you might be right there, but that's exactly what they were trying to do a bit earlier in the game, was pressing Casarina deep in their half, and they've done it well there, and they've come out with the ball. And nice work from the sub, Andrew Savas there as well. He had plenty of time, he could have had a shot, didn't panic, put the ball across to Oakland, Oakland headed it on, and then Enfredi, Andre Profiti came in, and uh, no mistake, put that one away. Well played to Port Darwin, and well played to Profiti, number 14, has a goal. So Tran trying to play out here. Goes to Curtis. Curtis Smith, number 11 for Casarino. Goes in there with a heavy tackle, which is okay, but the ball goes out of play. Port Darwin will receive the ball. Be a throw in. Looks like it's Oakland on the ball. Not sure. There's a bit, a bit of distance there for me. That's not Oakland. It's been left by the goal scorer. And Profiti will then leave it back. We'll get his number in a minute. So it's Tobias Kogi on the ball at the moment, number five. Nice skip inside. Lovely work to Roberto overlapping. Roberto has it goes back to... And Tobias Kogi on the ball again. There's three touches for him. He goes to McAvoy in the middle. McAvoy goes to Fannin. Fannin under a bit of pressure, pressure from uh, Casemiro, but gets out of that quite easily. Goes back to <clears throat> get another touch. 
and another one for the youngster. And Tobias moves forward, gets a call in from the referee. Great work and great determination deserves something from that. He's been in the play there three or four times. Number five, Tobias Kogi. So he'll go back in his defensive setup. Raimundo Jose will take the ball. He's got a nice right footer on her. He'll curl this in, hopefully find the play he's intending to find. Referee looks back at him. Hands up. Referee calls him to go. Moves in. It's a lovely ball coming over the top. Onto it, Roberto. Off that shining ball pot. Up it came. And he put his head to it early. And it just went past the right hand post of the Casarina goal. In the 15 minute mark here in the men's Premier League, this is round seven. First game of the weekend. Port Darwin running from right to left on your screen. They are the uh, traditional claret and blue, known as the Wharfies. And they're up against. Casarina in their white and black check, and they're known as the Rowdies. So two nicknamed teams out there tonight. Oakland on the ball, Savas in there as well. The sub came on very early in the game. Declan O'Shea couldn't re recommence his uh, time in the squad after that injury, so it's been taken by Andrew Savas. So, Daniel, as a coach, you often get changes to players you have to make on the run. You know, Declan O'Shea is so central to the defensive pattern. He sits at the back there. So they've had to put uh, Quinn back there in that position and put Savas in the midfield. Yeah, yeah, they have. But, but Quinn himself is a very strong player and, and I think he's up for that sort of position as well. So yes, yep. they've, they've lost Declan, but I think they've, they've got someone else there who can step into that same position. So they've got the depth and they're using it. Well put. Okay, McAvoy is just such a class on the ball then in the midfield. Puts it through. Look at that lovely work from Jose. Jose puts it in and uh, only as far as the keeper. But that's a good indication of what uh, McAvoy brings to this team. Not only is he captain, but Ryan McAvoy will patrol that midfield and uh, distribute as well as he did then. Fanning, Casemiro, Fanning, still with Fannin. And Fannin now got a, doesn't commit. Casemiro turns in on a nice turn, finds Curtis Smith. Curtis Smith goes wide, but a nice intervening foot from Savas. Brings that structured play undone. Still with Casarina though. Jara Van Lingen comes across to Seb Smith. Seb Smith back to Van Lingen. He goes across again to Tran. Tran goes to uh, Jacob Leonard. Leonard to Coombe. Now that's Hamilton on the ball. Again, patient. Possession play from Casarina. That's a misplaced pass, and that's what Port Darwin waiting for. Roberto made the run. It's now going to Oakland. Oakland looks up, finds Roberto. If he looked up a bit further, he had a, uh, a very unmarked player. If there's such a phrase. No one was on the goal scorer, Endry Profiti, on the far side, or what we call the Northcrest scoreboard side. So, Daniel, Port Darwin are putting good pressure on uh, Casarina. But also like some of the um, the attacking shape that they're, they're bringing forward when they get into Casarina's half. We are, we are. And actually, the ball's been around the middle of the park for a lot of this game. We haven't seen it too much up front in either of the 18-yard boxes. So I think it's uh, it's all coming down to what's happening with the midfields at the moment. Um, I'd say it's, it's a pretty even game, but Port Darwin do deserve to be out on top right now as it stands. And what are you expecting from your midfield? I mean, obviously, you know, controlling the ball and possession and distribu distribution has to be on the money. But um, it's a very defensive set as well. You have to be, you know, doing that extra effort. Absolutely. And you've got to be composed. You've got to know when it's time to go forward and when it's time to go backwards. Um, because the last thing you want to do is just give the ball straight back to them. So um, there's some good decisions being made. So a good uh, challenge there from number 12, the captain, Ryan McAvoy. Referee didn't like what he saw, but he made a word to him. But McAvoy, very accomplished player, just goes back, gets his position, knows it's important he gets back in the line. Not to worry about what happened there. So Van Lingren on the ball now. Takes the kick, puts it in. And uh, a little push in the back there from, uh, I think it's number 12. I can't see from right over there. 
can't help you there either. And that's There's, Daniel Marimba. No, not Daniel Marimba. It's Let a couple me. of times now on that right-hand side that there's been an overload there. So that right back yeah. um, has had two men. Um, and if they're going to allow that to keep happening, he is going to be caught out eventually. Yeah, we're talking, uh, it's a far way over there. I need my binoculars by three. But that's Samson uh, Mashamango over there, number 13. Um, good young player. And uh, as Daniel said, you have to watch it, though. There's some dangerous players of Casarina circling him. Right, back to uh, Van Lingen. He goes to Marimba. Marimba, nice little push through. That's uh, Ryan Newell, who's always dangerous in the midfield. But great work from McAvoy in the first instance. Quinn on the end of it. Back from them to Jose. Quinn now on the ball, looks up, goes across to the youngster and Tobias. Tobias Kogi turns it inside to Jose. Jose, Jose cleaned up by McAvoy. So two assured touches from McAvoy. It shows his presence in the midfield, how key he is. Oakland comes in. Curtis Smith is on the challenge, and he'll get this challenge. Roberto had some comments there as well. Don't know what the referee saw there. What was that? Uh, I'm not sure. I, th I think there was a verbal altercation there. Oh, okay. Referee reacted onto it straight away. What well, Port Darwin are doing really well is they're, they're congesting. When they don't have possession, they're really contracting, congesting the middle of the park there to deny Casarina any room. And you talk about playing your game and not the opposition's game. Is that what you're seeing in front of us here, that they're, they're, they're playing a Port Darwin game and not getting snuck into, sorry, tricked into the Casarina pace? Yeah, well, well, by doing that, by having so many guys behind the ball, I mean, there was a point there that I think that Roberto was the only one that was behind, sorry, in front of the ball, and then you've got nine guys sitting in behind it. I mean, how can Casarina break that down? Well said. Daniel giving us our expert insights here tonight. Coon puts the ball in, finds Marimba, goes behind him. Now this is a counter on. It's only two players. Roberto makes the run. Jose looks up, but that's just an ineffective pass. Right idea. Execution not quite there. Right, Marimba, who ball pounced before, before, is now on it. He again puts a ball. Again, intention was right. Quinn asked for some patience. And he talks to his keeper, Dominic Price. Puts it out to uh, the youngster. Really clean, fast, fast player. Fellas Roberto touch. Sickles. Sickles goes forward. Tran and Sickles now. Tran will get there first and let it run out over the uh, sideline, which it does. And it'll be a goal kick. Braden uh, McLennan takes a very quick one to Seb Smith. So a little bit more urgency in the Casarina play. Normally they play out of there with a little bit more. That's uh, Leonard work. Nice work from Leonard to Marimba. Marimba's going to try and take them on. That's not a good idea. There were three, three players in front of him, one of which was Jose. He wins that, tries to win it back from Casemiro. Good tackle from Quinn. McAvoy gets involved. That's a good play. Oakland on the ball now, but intercepted by Curtis Smith. Curtis Smith comes back. Some nice football from both sides, trying to weave their way through the midfield where there's plenty of, plenty of walls to get around. And there's a good example then of Oakland being one of those walls. Referee's playing advantage. Nice work from uh, Jose. And the... So the referee did play advantage, but not much advantage played out of it in the end because there was an offside play. Right, we're in the 23rd minute. This is round seven. Casarina running from left to right on your screen in their traditional black and white check with the black socks. They're looking at a 1-0 deficit at the moment. Port Darwin getting an early gold from their player number 14 from Albania. Andre, I'm oh, sorry, Andre, Andre Profiti. Well done to Andre. Last Albanian player I had was Bessart Barisha, mate, at the Raw. What a fantastic player he was. It's one of my favourite, I've got to admit. Yep, great player. Knew how to get to goal. Knew how to score them. Right, here we go. Outstanding Another weight on player the ball. knows how to score is on the ball now. But unfortunately, the bounce doesn't favour him. That's Roberto. And Roberto Sickles has just been dispossessed by Van Lingen. So Ryan Newell restarts. It goes right across to Hamilton. Hamilton goes back to the keeper. And uh, Casarina will play this out with patience from the back. Jacob Lennon, number eight on the ball, goes across. Curtis Smith back to Tran. Tran looking to thread that through to Mark Casemiro, who's coming back, looking the ball. Beautiful pace on him. Goes down. And who put him down? Samson Mashamango. Samson needs to watch that. There's been a couple of times he's been in there with a stray boot. 
and uh, brings Casemiro down. Interesting to see Casemiro going back looking for the ball as well, Daniel. Well, he's being starved up there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that congested that he's not really getting much of it, and he's used to having a lot of the ball and a lot of space, so he, he's coming back to find it. But that, that nearly worked there for Casarino. They spent their time defensively drawing Port Darwin out, and then were able to get in and behind them. Um, but I think that's about six fouls now to Port Darwin and only one to Casarino. So I still think it, it feels like Port Darwin are making a physical statement here. Yep. Um, we're not going to give you time. We're not going to let you get away with this easy or anything easy here. Um, we're going to make you feel it. Yeah, and, they, and then last week they, they nearly did it for 90 minutes against you at Mindel Aces. And they're going to have to do it for 90 minutes in full tonight. You can see the hunger building in them as a team. I mean, they've, they've got zero points at the moment, but some of the games they've played doesn't really reflect the performances they've had. Yeah, how true is that? And that's, that's the game and the beautiful game of football. You know, you can do everything right and still not bring home the bickies. Okay, nice work there from... Uh, I think it was Jose. Yes, it was. So Ramondo will make the run back over here. He's got a bit of a, a passport there travelling across the pitch. And now come back over to uh, his left-hand side, the grandstand side. And he's in the claret and blue number seven for Port Darwin, known as the Wharfies. Round seven here in the Darwin Men's Premier League. So happy to bring this to you on the uh, Perform Network right around the country, right around the world. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you may be and on your screens, whatever they may look like. McAvoy in there again, number 12, the captain. Puts his very strong head to it. He's going to get a second go at it. Looks to put that on to Savas. Savas does win the ball. And uh, Kogi goes forward. No, a little bit too smart work there from Jose. Raimondo would like that back again, I'm sure. Now this is what they get. Straight on the counter. It's Coombe on the ball. Massimango on him. Coombe, Massimango goes back to Marimba. Marimba's got challenged down again. That's about your point, Daniel, about turning down the pace and time for the Casarina side. Great example of it. And they created that space by, by playing a quick long ball there. And Port Darwin had about three or four players that were walking back. The midfield was very slow to get back to support um, Port Darwin's back four there. Right, Seb Smith on the overrun. So the overlap comes in. Nice turn on the inside. But uh, Tobias... Kogi showing some good skills. Number five, youngster. His second real start of the game uh, uh, for the season, I think. And uh, he got in the way of Seb Smith there and uh, diffused that potential situation for Casarina. Right. Dominic Price on the ball. Everyone's taking a breath, as they will at the 27-minute mark. And that ball harmlessly run over the players' heads and over the sideline. Tran on the ball, number 13. With the ponytail running and slapping into his back. He's on the ball again. He goes back to uh, Braden McLennan, the Indigenous NT footballer playing in goals tonight for Casarina. Can play outfield. Play anywhere, really, Brendan. Right, Marimba on the ball. What can he do in his green boots? Goes back. Nice dancing moves. Finds Leonard. Leonard looks up and goes to uh, Hamilton, who's done an overlap as well. Hamilton, a very, exclus a, a very experienced player, will turn in. So it's good defensive work there. And defensive work from the uh, goal scorer, actually. So Andre Profiti back there doing some defensive work for his team, Port Darwin. If you just joined us, Port Darwin in the claret and blue running from right to left on your screen. This is a round seven match in the Darwin Football uh, Men's Premier League. Beautiful Friday night for football. Local time is around uh, 9 p.m. Gorgeous weather. Been a beautiful day again. It's beautiful every day in the dry season. Um, and no breeze around to uh, tell you about. And a nice temperature as well. So you've seen some good quality open football. Right, over through pass to Sampson and Coombe. And Paracos gets that ball in, finds Ma Casarino, Casar, Casamiro from Casarino. Nice work from uh, Curtis Smith. Tran on the ball now. Where will he go? He's going to go back to Van Lingen. Van Lingen pushes forward, wants some more urgency, gets that. Ryan Neal now on a nice little turn back. Someone needs to give him some help, though. Good press. Good press from Port Darwin. 
Options aren't always there for Kazarina, but they'll be patient. They're looking for a way through this. Trend goes up to an advancing Coombe. Coombe comes back up, looks up, finds Hamilton on the left, what we call the Northcrest scoreboard side of the venue. And the venue is Larrakia Park, Darwin Football Stadium on the main pitch. We're back with Leonard again. Leonard's gone for a longer ball. That's a bit, bit cute and clever, but does find Curtis Smith. He has a shot from there, puts his left foot to it, and that goes well and truly four or five metres over the goal. No opposition required from any of the Port Darwin or the keeper players to get in there and be involved. So that's well of the mark. So, Daniel, 30-minute mark. You're getting ready to say something to the teams at half time. Port Darwin have just got to keep pressing, I guess. Keep putting those challenges on. As we're, you we're, said, make their physical presence known. Yeah, well, it's working. I mean, uh, look at it at the moment. When Kazarian are in possession, don't allow them to play. Uh, but also, we've got to be really cautious that... Uh, I'm just watching Mark Casimiro's movements, and he, he's drifting wider and wider, trying to find pockets of space. And if they fall asleep for a moment, he's going to be in there. I mean, he's, he's Kazarian's top goal scorer right now. Um, so we know he can put them in the net. And they've just got to stay aware. We're talking about Marky Casemiro, one of my favourite players, number seven, as uh, Daniel so rightly pointed out, very dangerous as he drifts. And if you're off your game or you don't concentrate for a second, lovely work from Ramando Jose there, reclaiming that ball. That was beautiful. Right now, and he matched it up with a lovely ball through. It's now a foot race. Roberto, unfortunately, is offside. He's, he's not happy. He's asking why. No, he's not. He's asking one of his players. I'll take that back, Roberto. He's looking to um, see what Oakland was up to. They've had a conversation. They're settled. They know what they're going to do next time. Right, ball's underway with Ryan Newell for Casarina. He will go to... Well, he attempted to go to uh, Marimba. Fannin will have to go back. Casemiro is there early. That is what he can do. That is sensational. Mark Casemiro, you are an tr- out-and-out striker. Deadly. Absolutely Deadly. The difference between him getting there and, and not getting there was like half a second. It was, and the, the defensive player had about a five-minute head start there, so it just shows how quick he is, and that takes him uh, tied at the top of the goal-scoring leaderboard with Simon Bell now, both on eight goals. Well, and you're also Nostradamus. You said he was drifting. You said he was dangerous. What does he do 30 seconds later? Exhibits exactly that. Beautiful work from Mark Casemiro. That's an equaliser. One all on the scoreline. Beautiful play from number seven for Casarina. Dangerous. Fast. Can't train that speed. Speed. You can't, you can't, but he didn't have to have his teammates pass him that ball there. That was, uh, that was a mispass there by Port Darwin, so they're, they're their own worst enemies right now. Right. Yeah, well played, Mark Casemiro, to get in there in front of the uh, Port Darwin defender and then skip it over the very reliable Dominic Price for that goal. Lovely work. Will we have a response, an instant oh, response? Oh. We may do. Referees has no problem with that. Coombe comes out. They're exposed here. They are. We'll see what happens. Ball comes down. Sampson. Masha Mango on the run. Falls for... Sampson comes back in. <coughs> Outside the box. Fanning says something. Quinn says something again. He gets a yellow card. He has that in his game. Dylan Quinn. Wholehearted player. And a yellow card in the 33rd minute of this match. Had indiscretion there from Samson, Samson sorry, Mashamango, number 13. The defender for Port Darwin. And so we're going to have a set piece here. The wall will be formed shortly. Bit of conversations happening with all the players. And uh, Daniel Marimba will make the long trek out to retrieve the ball. That's unusual. Usually there's three or four players around the ball. Give me a sense that someone's going to take it, but not the one I think. This time is a solo. He said it's mine, and that mine is number 12, Daniel Marimba. Right, the wall's being formed. There are five in the wall. There's the... Uh, I think it's Leonard or Hamilton hanging off that. No, it's Leonard. Making it six in the wall. 
He's been told to move away, which he does. And he'll stand very close to Fanning. Fannin, sorry. Uh, the uh, number 19 for Port Darwin. Okay. Referee goes back, jogs into position, turns to the whistle. Here we go. Moves in, takes the shot. Oh, my goodness. Not far off from taking in that left-hand top corner of the goal. And the keeper had no chance had it done that. But Price just watched it go past. Fortuitously for them, it remains one all on the scoreboard in the 35th minute mark. So a restart from Dominic Price for Port Darwin. Last five minutes have been very much Casarinas. Seem to have come back with some more purpose. A bit more energy, I think, too, in the midfield, uh, Daniel. Yeah, Port absolutely cannot let them get back into the game here. They've got to hold out to half-time and, and hopefully keep it one all or steal another goal before they go in. Yeah, I think that's the intention. They've had a very positive mindset tonight, Port Darwin, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably look for a goal. There he goes, uh, Quinn in there. Nice, strong play from him. Kogi on the ball, puts it through. Nice idea. Just a bit too much punch on the ball, so it'll run through to the keeper, McLennan. McLennan goes back to Seb Smith. Seb Smith puts it across. Nice ball right across to Tran. Tran, lovely first touch, brings that under control. Well played from him. He finds Leonard. Leonard goes back to Tran. Tran's looking for an opportunity. And Port Casemiro Darwin. comes back. They've got to be careful. They're being drawn out. Casemiro is purposefully drawing out Port Darwin's midfield to create room. And Marky Casemiro is dropping into that space and receiving that ball. Insights from our expert analyst today. That's uh, Daniel, coach of Mindel Aces. And uh, thank you, Daniel, for giving your time and your insights here tonight. Much appreciated. Leonard on the ball now in the midfield. Little double tag team defensive work there from Nefridi. And Profiti uh, and um, Roberto doing the work there. Savas in the middle there. Roberto in again, giving second and third efforts as he does every week when he's playing. All right, Ben Lingen on the ball. He looks up and that finds Quinn's head. Quinn goes back to McAvoy. McAvoy back to Savas. Savas would like that pass again. Goes in. You have to get on the ball and make a defensive game there. Doesn't. Keeps some pressure on. Late challenge. And Samson. Mashamango has gone down. He called Curtis Smith up. Is he going to the card? He's giving him one option. He's having a chat to him. He's on a warning. It looked reckless, Daniel, to me. It did. It did. Very reckless. I'm surprised he's only gotten away with the warning there. Right on the ball is Dominic Price. He moves in. He's got a lovely style. That's a right foot. That's given plenty of distance. A push in the back from Casarina. So the ball will fall for Port Darwin. Spectators are happy with that, the Port Darwin fans. Uh, we're in stage three of the road map to the new normal, so we only allowed 500 in the venue. Um, we've got plenty more, thousands more watching at home or in their car or wherever they may be on their screens. And a beautiful night like tonight, you can be outdoors enjoying the Northern Territory dry season up here in the tropics. School holidays here too, Daniel. So you see uh, a lot of... Uh, Different number plates, not as many as you normally would see. But I saw a couple of Victorians, they were keeping their head down. <laughs> I wonder why. I can, I can imagine why they'd be keeping their head down <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, poor buggers are getting tarred with all the, one brush, the COVID-19 brush. But uh, a lot of regional Victorians have had it off early before the lockdown came, and it's pretty much a metropolitan lockdown at this stage anyhow. Right, goal, call, goal scorer's on the ball. He's got a wall formed, and he moves. He's going to leave it for Roberto. No, he doesn't. Roberto dubbies over the top. Now it's going to be him. He has that shot. And That's he puts it. it in. It is a brace. What a beautiful taken shot. To your point, Daniel, they have a really assertive and, and, and uh, what we call a positive mindset tonight. And there's a good example of it. They almost fooled themselves. Certainly fooled me. But they had a jump over from Roberto, a pass from one player back to um, uh, Profiti. And he just put it away. What a beautifully placed ball. That was, that was a routine. They were doing that at training. You could see it. There was no way that was random. They've been working on that, and it's come off. You can see why. Put in the effort, you get the results. Daniel says it's a training run. I love it. That's so much from a coach. 
I'll just take it as being really special, but these guys have worked hours on it. That's what I like. They have. Well they played. Have. Port Darwin on the 39-minute mark have a 2-1 scoreline over our previous... Uh, over our prior... Over our prior and a previous... No, our, our existing premiers and champions, Casarino. It's so important now that they don't get baited out. They don't allow Casarino the space in behind. Well, Daniel, we always talk about the five minutes before half time being desperately important. This is going to be doubly so here. Five minutes before half time, the five minutes after you score a goal. I mean, exposure. And in this case, it'll be the same. Absolutely. Yep, some wise commentary there from uh, our expert analyst here in this round seven match featuring Port Darwin, who have a 2 1 scoreline advantage over Casarino. Casarino on the ball now, one of their young stars there, Coombe, showing all his dancing feet. Quinn comes in with a big right foot size 12 and brings that to a close Roberto who's been everywhere puts the ball away to a goal scorer but a double goal scorer and it's fantastic for number 14 Andre Profiti watch him drifts on that right hand side that's and smart yeah very smart by Port Darwin they just need to they just need to slow it down a bit here Kajarin is desperate for a response and they, they have to deny them yeah it shows the maturity shows that they, they, they're, they're adapting to their coaches directions and intention as you said at the early part too they're just settling on their personnel as well mate and then they give it straight back to them just like that <laughs> yeah the yin and yang of life the yin and yang of life but there was there was no pressure on the on him at all there he could have yep. just held the ball and burnt another probably another minute off the clock yep so we'll see what happens Tran on the ball now it's still down in the right place if you're a Port Darwin player in the Casarina defensive third Tran looks up he also puts in a long one that doesn't find the intended target. But Curtis Smith in there early with some nice energetic play. He's running out of people and space. Running out of people and space. That's a whole ball challenge. Well done from Savas. Savas puts it back in. McAvoy moves in early. Nice little left footer over the top. Lovely skill from him. He's got that in here. This is the goal scorer. Looking for a hat trick. No, but he'll play it back. Oakland has a shot. Left footer inside of his uh, instep and doesn't find the goal, but nice enterprise play Look at Mark Casemiro here. Here he goes. He's such a uh, speed merchant. That ball will find him. He turns on the afterburners. Off he goes. Fannin in there. It's outside the box. Fannin got ball and player there. Referee's pulled him up. So it's outside the box. Casemiro still on the ground, 42nd minute mark. To your point, Daniel, they have to be so switched on here, know where the men are, know who's drifting, anticipate every move from the, uh, the rowdies here. If you're a coach, this is a coach killer time, this. You're hoping your players are switched on. 42 minutes and 43 seconds in this match here, round seven. 2-1 to Port Darwin over Casarina. Can Casarina get one back? Can Port Darwin keep them out? Two people in the wall. Left foot. Looks like Leonard or Smith. I think it's Leonard. No, it's Smith. He's good on his left foot too. Bit of space there. Price has got his wall set. Referee's still in there having a chat to people. Moves away. Now he's going over to his position. Port Darwin need to be on the money. Casarina need the goal. Moves in. Nice chip over the top. Finds the head of Quinn. Quinn gets rid of it. But only as far as Kogi. But Kogi now has it through. This is the double score. Goal scorer. He swats over now. Number 14. Lovely skill from him. Andrew Savas on the run. Tram with nice work. But this will run out of play. No Seb Smith will get it first. Oakley moves in. But as far as they say, Raimundo is then dispossessed. That could have been an opportunity for Port Darwin. Unfortunately, his first touch eluded him there. Hamilton on the ball now in the 44-minute mark on the uh, Northcrest scoreboard side. Now, that's loose. Marimba in there. Fannin comes across. Great work from the uh, very experienced number 19 for Port Darwin. Terry Fannin. Not only was it a good interception, he's also got a deflection, so the ball's going to remain with Port Darwin. I don't know why Samson is running after it. <laughs> but anyhow, Samson, you just need to delay it, mate. 
He's on it now. Goes back to Fannin. Fannin will uh, look forward, take a little run here. Someone needs to drop back and help him out. Puts a dipping one over the top. Roberto needs to put pressure on. He does that. Comes on the inside, keeping the player go wide. Wide goes to Hamilton. Hamilton plays it across to Van Lingen. Poor Darwin will now have to interrupt this patient play, and they've done that. Ramondo Jose showing all the skills. Passes inside. McAvoy, no, sorry, Oakland to uh, Tobias Kogi. And Tobias, nice pressure from uh, Port Darwin. Keeping in the right part of the paddock. And Ryan Newell will try and make that an advantage. He moves forward. Nice balanced footballer, is he? And Ryan gets hit from behind, expecting something from the ref, doesn't get it. So this now remains a ball with the Claret and Blue. Tran goes back. We're now into time added. 45 minutes of regul regulation time has passed. We'll see how much time is added. I wouldn't expect much. Braden McLennan on the ball now. Goes to Van Lingen. Van Lingen finds Leonard. Leonard goes across to Tran. And uh, to Daniel's point earlier, the expert analyst here, what Kazarina trying to do is to suck the midfield out of their positions. At the moment, we could throw one of those half-price Indian rugs over all of them there, mate. They're all in one place. Okay, here we go. Coombe on the ball. Puts a nice pass through. Fannin gets his leg in there. That's nice, skillful, experienced, offensive work. It's always best you defend to stay on your feet, except then. Except that then, was... and that, that's a couple in a row now from yeah. Terry that he's, he's gone out and he's... Uh... He's setting, setting an example there for his teammates. He's saying, I don't want to go in there 2-2. Two, two. I, I want it to stay 2-1. Yeah, it's fantastic from uh, the very experienced Terry Fannin. Follow my lead. Yep. Do as I do. Okay, that's a shot. And uh, Ryan Newell could love that again. Ball still in play. Ramundo Jose on it. Ramundo, don't muck around with it. Now Coombe has it. Nice intervention from Kogi. Goes back into that dangerous spot. McAvoy gets his foot to it. Goes as high as the light poles. Comes back to Tran. Roberto puts some pressure on him. Good work from him. There's two in there. That's the sort of effort you want from Port Darwin. Keeping it in the midfield, keeping it out of the danger zone. Ryan Newell again will put it through. This is where it is dangerous. Mark Casemiro already has one. Puts it across the goal. Samson Mashamango puts it out. Play still in play. Time added. We must be in the second minute of time added. Referee's going to let this throw in go in. I don't know how much time is left. Ball comes in, tangle of players, remains with, I think, can't see his number from there, but poor Darwin. Right, okay, corner kick, dangerous time. Must be switched on, the Claret and Blues. Early one taken, comes in, drifts in, plenty of the height to the ball. Ball still in that dangerous place, he has a shot, comes off a deflection, will be a corner kick, this time on the grandstand side. One of the exciting, intense last few minutes of this half, all time added. Looks like Ryan Newell will take this. He does. He'll be a right footer. Switch on. All players. Absolutely required. Ball comes in. Goes in. Header's got there. Cleaned off the line. And into Dominic Price's hands. Dominic Price is dispossessed. This will go over the line. And it will be a Port Darwin ball. No need to run, Tobias. Okay, there goes the whistle from the referee. That was a really exciting last five minutes. I hope you take all that in. Take that all in. Enjoy that first half. Three goals. Got to be happy with that. Three really good goals. 2-1 uh, to Port Darwin over Casarina. Port Darwin is in the box seat at the moment. They need to keep this up for 45 minutes plus and see if they can bring home their first win for the season. Casarina will head into what we call the Grand Sheds because they're on the ground and they'll have a talk with their coach and we'll see what they have for the second half. My name is Bruce Sorter. We'll be back after this short break. We'll pick this little half apart and have some uh, expert comments and insights from our uh, expert analyst in Daniel and see what he thinks the second half will give us as spectators and as people who love the game. Short break.
Well, it's half time here at uh, Larrakia Park, Darwin Football Stadium on the main pitch. We've got some of the subs kicking the ball around in a, a beautiful night here in the uh, dry season. Friday night football, couldn't ask for better conditions. Had a really interesting first half. Three goals, always happy with that. Let's just have a look at some of the highlights from that first half and then we'll talk to our expert analysts and sort of pick it apart and see what we think Nostradamus-like will be the next 60, uh, 45 minutes. That is Coom on the ball now, who will be dangerous. That's a lovely ball through. If he's got time and place, he does. He turns on the right foot. He'll have a shot. Of course he will. That's Daniel Marimba. Seb Smith on the overlap. He ignores him, goes into Coom. Coom's on the ball. And great work from the keeper. Won't get it, because this ball's gone through to Savas on the run. Savas puts it across. It goes into Oakland. Oakland has a hand to go across. This is Enfredi. He goes in shot. It's a and goal. It's in. It is a goal. And a player I mentioned earlier on, so dangerous as he drifts in and out. That's Andre Profiti, number 14. And he puts that pass, won't get it, because this ball's gone through to Savas on the run. Savas puts it across. It goes into Oakland. Oakland has a hand to go across. This is Enfredi. He goes in shot. It's a and goal. It's in. It is a goal. And a player I mentioned earlier on, so dangerous as he drifts in and out. That's Andre Profiti, number 14. And he puts that pass oh, right to... Well, he attempted to go to uh, Marimba. Fannin will have to go back. Marcel Casemiro is there early. That is what he can do. That is sensational. Mark Casemiro, you are a out-and-out -out striker. Deadly. Absolutely deadly. The difference between him getting there and, and not getting oh, there to... Well, he attempted to go to uh, Marimba. Fannin will have to go back. Marcel Casemiro is there early. That is what he can do. That is sensational. Mark Casemiro, you are a out-and-out -out striker. Deadly. Absolutely deadly. The difference between him getting there and, and not getting ball. there... He's got a wall formed and he moves. He's going to leave it for Roberto. No, he doesn't. Roberto dumbies over the top. Now it's going to be him. He has that shot and That's he puts it. it in. It is a brace. What a beautiful taken shot. To your point, Daniel, they have a really assertive and, and, and uh, what we call a positive mindset tonight, and that's a good example of it. They almost fooled themselves, certainly fooled me, but they had a jump over from Roberto. A pass. Ball, he's got a wall formed, and he moves. He's going to leave it for Roberto. No, he doesn't. Roberto dumbies over the top. Now it's going to be him. He has that shot, and that's he puts him. it in. It is a brace. What a beautiful taken shot. To your point, Daniel, they have a really assertive and, and, and uh, what we call a positive mindset tonight, and that's a good example of it. They almost fooled themselves, certainly fooled me, but they had a jump over from Roberto, a pass from... There was a great little snapshot of the uh, first half. I've got Daniel with him, our expert analyst. Daniel, y y there were a lot of stuff in there came true, you know, but the most important thing for me was that Port Darwin applied themselves for 45 minutes, had a really positive mindset, and the score reflects that, 2-1. And you said when it went one all, they've got to keep Casarina out, and you sort of just said, oh, and get a goal themselves. That's exactly what they did. It is, and it came from a free kick as well. So they, they pressed high up the pitch, they were fouled, and they, they converted it. So, look, they don't come off all the time, but like I said, they, they <laughs> clearly practiced that one. That, there was no random event there, so they, they've done well. Uh, no random event. So, listen, you're in the um, Port Darwin huddle there as a coach. What are you saying to these guys as they go out for this next 45 minutes, mate? Keep, I mean, keep the intensity. The, the, the game plan they've gone out with has worked, right? They, they've, they've put a lot of intensity into their tackles. They've said to Kajuna, we're going we're gonna to let you know we're here. Um, when you have the ball, we're going to sit quite deep and restrict the space that you have. We're not going to allow one of your quickest players, Mark Casarina, to have the space he needs to operate. Um, but in saying that, the, the goal they conceded, they did allow that space. So yep. they, they can't fall asleep. And look, Port Darwin played against Mindel last week, and, and I hope they don't fall asleep again there because they did have a lead on us. So we, we know they can get ahead. The question is, can they hold it? Yep. Well, that's a great way to introduce the, the second half. Will, will Port Darwin maintain so-called the rage and get through this next 45? Casarina, Mark Casemiro is a standout. He is so dangerous. But they have Coom and Marimba on this side as well. So if you take your eye off them, they can also hurt you. Exactly. And if you look at Mark, he's, he's not really playing centrally. He's actually loading up one of those sides with uh, Marimba and Coom on the other side. So when you've got two of them, two, two players of that standard or quality against any right back or left back, they, they will win that duel. Um, it's just will they have that support there in the midfield coming onto the goal and coming onto the 18-yard box? Well put, mate. So we'll uh, get back onto this game very shortly. We'll swing the cameras around and take this game. I'm really looking forward to this next 45 minutes. Can Port Darwin hang on for their first win of the season? 
Or will the current champions and premiers have a say in that? Let's have a look. We're into it. Lovely. All right. I'm looking forward to it for a lot of reasons. And I, I mean, the, the, the least of those reasons is to see some of the personal battles that were already evolving in that first half. But now to see whether or not, as a team, those little individual battles will feed into a team performance that Port Darwin goes home with a win. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, the last time Port Darwin beat Casuarina was roughly a year ago to date. Um, what was it? Round 12 last year, 6th of July. So it's been a year since the win. Maybe that's a bit of a sign. Um, let's, let's see if they can do it again. Okay. Well, Roberto Sickles on the ball. He goes back to uh, an early sub in Andrew Savis. Um, and, you know, and I know that, that Quinn often goes back to the, to the centre of defence, but not having Declan O'Shea there just shows how committed this team's been today for me. Fannin on the ball and uh, the dangerous Casemiro in there. And to Daniel, your point, this next five minutes is very, very dangerous. Samson Massimengo again having a little problem with the throw-in. So Hamilton will take it up. Back to Hamilton again. Ball comes in. Quinn's there. Nice play from Quinn. Got his head to it. Puts it out wide. And that's uh, Tobias Kogi. Oh, look at that work from uh, Roberto Sickles. He's put it back onto an advancing Kogi. That, that you know... Unlucky there because that could have been a nice through ball to uh, an advancing Roberto Sickles. Right now, Hamilton on the ball again. Lennon puts one over. Comes back to Lennon again. And a pressure here. Tran on Re and Roberto, but Tran nice and calmly plays it back. Van Lingen in the centre. Newell back across. Seb Smith on the ball. Andrew Savas on another touch early in the second half. Oakland on the ball there. Only as far as Tran. Looks up. Casarina defenders now put a foot race on. And Tobai, Tobias Kogi there gets the ball back. And he plays into McAvoy. McAvoy nicely played to Jose. Jose looks up and finds Roberto. Now Roberto has an option to go left or right. He's going to go left. Nice interplay with him and Savas. Savas goes back to Jose. So, and uh, only as far as Ryan Newell. So Casarina on the ball there. We're still both teams feeling themselves out in the uh, each other out in this first three minutes of the second half. Round seven match. Just joined us. Casarina running from right to left in their black and white traditional check with the black socks. And they're known as the Rowdies. That's Casarina Football Club. Current premiers and champions here in the Darwin Men's Premier League. Had a fabulous season last year. We're clearly the best team. And uh, won the premiership. And then followed it up in a very difficult, but in, in the end, successful championship finals series. Right, it's Seb Smith puts the ball through. That's a pretty hopeful one. No, it wasn't Seb Smith. It was Van Lingen. So it'll roll over the goal line down at the McMillan's Road end of this Larrakia Park main pitch. Darwin Football Stadium has these pitches running north-south, of course, and uh, 
we're boarded by a bar the road or the car park end or, or this end here which is a very busy road here main road in McMillan's road so Price puts it back into play young Dominic so let's see what Port Darwin can do in this early part of the second half McAvoy gets a ball to it early uh, unfortunately there for the Port Darwin players it's fallen the way of Casarina and they'll patiently play this out as they normally do Coombe on the ball now he'll dance around puts an early ball to Mark Casemiro Casemiro's pushed by Savas and Savas will uh, watch as Dylan Newell plays the ball back very animated performance there by um, actor in a great supporting role in in, uh, he does get involved. They've fallen Dylan asleep Quinn there, Port the, Darwin. Allowed that quick free kick to be taken. Not, they shouldn't worry about what referees do, for goodness sake. Anyhow, that one's gone well and truly over both the uh, goals and the uh, protective nets behind the goals. And just fallen over behind the tree there. That tree was a beautiful big tree, Daniel, with... Branches everywhere, and then Cyclone Marcus came through and thought, no, you're not. I'm going to be a barber on you. And so, uh, quite a few trees and their limbs come down from that tree. It's been quite a good goalkeeper the last few weeks as well. I've seen <laughs> the tree make a number of saves. It has, mate. It has. It's been very good. And he's had discussions, actually, with uh, Liverpool. <laughs> uh, this ball comes through now. And Oakland in on that one, nice and strong. Double goal scorer there for Port Darwin. Number 14, Andre Brafiti. And Andre backs back into position. Hamilton on the ball now, throws it down. I could be wrong, but I think Hamilton's come out in number 15 just for this half. He might have had a jersey malfunction, so to speak. And he's wearing 15. He's with the beard here. Really experienced player for Casarina. Quinn could have done better. Marimba's on the run now. Goes across to Coombe. Coombe in, but uh, Tobias Kogi in there. Nice little battle between those two. And this one won comprehensively by Tobias Kogi. So the run's on now. That's uh, Ramondo Jose. Nice skill from him on the right foot. He should have gone then. He's going to go with his left. Will he go with his left? He dances again. Roberta Sigler goes across. This goal's played on. McAvoy has an opportunity. Dances in behind him. Could have been a third from Profiti. Wow, what just happened then? Everyone went to go then. Oakland, I think it was as well, in there. Not McAvoy. So here we go again. Port set up again. Can they make this one count? McAvoy will play advantage. No, he doesn't. He pulls it back. A few shots on goal there, Dan. Uh, a few Daniel. shots on goal, but it all came from a great tackle there from Tobias. He, he made a tackle. He was committed. His team were exposed if he didn't get that tackle, and then he had a great release. Um, so it's so a credit to young Tobias there for that. Yeah, well, well spotted. It did start with him. So it's got a sub going to be taken with this uh, break and play. Coming from the field is uh, looks like Jacob Leonard. Right, as he turns around, I can see he's the number plate. Or it could be Curtis Smith. It looks like it's... Jacob, yeah, Jacob Lennon's come from the pitch. He's been replaced by um, someone we all know here in Darwin, in Iman Muklas, number 10. So dangerous on both the set pieces and his distribution around there. He's straight into it, already talking to the team, already starting to position players. I can guarantee you the communication levels are going to go up. That's for sure. Let's hope Port Darwin aren't left regretting that one. They, they really could have put that one away there. Yeah, good point, Daniel. Okay, Jose puts it drifting over the top. It does find the head. Oh, well played to a player that's got that in him, Dylan Quinn. He's such a talented player. If you just forget what referees did, concentrate on the game. Look at that. It was a lovely run, drifted in behind the defenders. Ball was placed on him. He could have put that in the, in the net there. So a, a wayward header in the end, but really, really well run from... Dylan Quinn, number four, in the central defensive role now. He's back in that position for Port Darwin. They're running from left to right on your screen. They are the Claret and Blue. Have a 2-1 scoreline advantage over Casarina at the moment. That's Savas, the sub. Looks up and uh, forgets that his player's not there at the moment. He'd like to have that one back again. Right, first time Muglis has been on the ball. He won it back. 
demands it, but now Ryan Neal goes, I'm going to go this way. Turns on the inside, looks up, dips across to Marimba. Marimba against Samson. And Samson Mashamango on the ball now. Tries to take him on. Tries to take them all on. Tries to take them all on again. Puts the ball through. Well played, Samson. Nice, skillful work from Profiti. He's really a talent. Ball comes over to him now. That's well worked by Port Darwin. Can they make this pay? Goes to Oakland. Oakland finds Roberto. Roberto pulls up. Thought he was offside. And uh, Braden puts it out because he can. And that's gone into the next suburb down or the airport on the runway. So the ball's been collected. And the ball boy, John Dean, puts it back into play. Just no lovely work then from um, uh, Andre Brafiti then. He's just such a sensible player, the Albanian. The way he just played that back and then over the top and uh, made space. Just got so much time when he's on the ball. Uh, he's on it now. That's the guy we're talking about. Puts a right cross in. It's dangerously bouncing. Ramondo Jose will pick it up. He goes back to Tobias Kogi. Puts in a, a drifter over the back of the goal. And the Port Darwin spectators... Very excited there, thinking you've gone into goal. And it's always good to have that excitement from your spectators. They are willing their team home tonight. Uh, 56 minutes. So much of this game to go. The tension will build as the every minute passes. Particularly on the Port Darwin side. McLennan with a kick out. Finds Ryan Newell. That misses Ryan's head, but does bounce towards Marimba. Fanning's there. Fanning is very measured. Oak, uh, not Oakland. Graffiti comes back. A little bit of a mix-up between 19 and 14 for Port Darwin, but uh, not dangerously mixed up. Okay, ball goes back again. This is Curtis Smith. Curtis Smith will let it run out, and there'll be a change of possession. And this will fall for Port Darwin. Looks like Oakland on the ball there. Curtis Smith gets there early. It is Oakland. Now it's a nice win. If that ball can be kept by Savas, he looks up. Who's going to give it to him? Now it goes back to a safer option in McAvoy. McAvoy skilled. Goes on to in fruit. Profiti puts it through to Roberto. Roberto sickles on goal. Left foot. He'll have a go here. He'll have a go. And that's a penalty inside the box. Brought down. No hesitation. Hang on. I think the yeah. linesman saying that one's offside there. They're very lucky. Are Port Darwin asleep, though? They've got a lot of players committed. That's unfortunate. Just clever play by Imam Muklis, of course. Get in there and took an early one, put it into Roberto Sickles back. Roberto was just walking back, so he's going to get a yellow card for that for being in the play. He won't be affected by it. That was a really good opportunity by him then. Just offside a little. Enterprising stuff from Port Darwin. There's two opportunities they could have had. Will that come back and be an issue later in this game? Well, all right, so they could be 4-1 up, mate. Lee, they could be. They could be 4-1 up. i just go back to that, that attempt before. If it's 3-1, yep. it's a different game right now. Yep. So we're in the 58th minute. There's been a lot of Port Darwin in this game so far. Right, Marimba, number 12 for Casarina. Puts the ball across to Coombe. Coombe puts on a, a nice little fancy back heel, but only as far. That's nice work from Oakland. But unfortunately, it didn't work for Port Darwin. Tobias Kogi looking to put it through, but unfortunately not to the right player. Puts it through to Seb Smith for Casarina. So Casarina still have it here. They'll do some patient build-up. A lot of conversation. Tran's now just gone down. He's in pain. He just dropped to the ground. Got to be cramped. Yes, it is. He's only been on the pitch a couple of minutes, but uh, there's one player I've heard more from Kajarina's team than anyone else, and that's Iman Muglis, who's just come on. Um, he's already quite vocal, and, and up to this point, Kajarina have been a very quiet side. Yeah, so I, mean, I think the, uh, the substitution that was made by Kajarina was probably for that reason. And not only is he a great player, but he will fire them up. Um, Imam Muklas, number 10, we're talking about for 
Casarina still talking away, talking to the keeper. We, we saw it when uh, we played against Casarina, and he was actually in goals, but he absolutely marshaled that defensive line. His communication was outstanding there, and um, b- because of that, we, we really struggled to break through there. Um, yeah. So it goes to show that it's not all about your feet and your hands. Uh, it's also about your voice and, and the clear instructions he was giving to his team. Well put. So we've got some work being played out on uh, Darren Habits out there. And Darren's uh, putting in the work on Quinlan Tran, who just dropped to the ground like he'd been hit by a sniper. I think it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to note, I was having a look at both the teams and their, their squad lists in the Premier League, and uh, Port Darwin have uh, had more individual players take the pitch in the Premier League than any other team. So they've actually had 32 different people take the pitch for their Premier team. Um, the, the next highest was Casarino with 27. So it, it just goes to show that Lee Addison and, and Port Darwin are still trying to work out who is the best in, in which position, who is our Premier team. And you'll probably get that with a new coach coming in. He's just trying to see who can step up to the, the level of Premier League. Um, but in terms of fluidity, Port Darwin have a number of different players in the team every week. So I think if they can start getting a consistent call there and start locking down that 16, uh, there's going to be a lot of stability through the team. And we're seeing some of that tonight. I, I, I totally agree with you. I was going to say McAvoy and Oakland and Jose and uh, the double goal, goal scorer in um, uh, Profiti are all examples of that. They weren't there at the beginning of the year. They are now. And you're right, you're getting some consistency of play. And for a coach's point of view, he is new to the club. It's only seven weeks into the season. Nice uh, sportsmanship from Port Darwin. Only seven weeks into the season. And I think you're spot on, Daniel. I think he's, he's getting closer and closer to who, what he wants and where they want him. Exactly, and actually Port Darwin this week in the, in the reserves in the second division, they don't have a game. So he's had uh, two whole squads of hungry players, um, which is a great position to be in as a coach. Yep. Right, Curtis Smith on the run. Uh, and Fannin, with all his experience, wins the ball and wins the attention of the referee. Well played to Terry. So, Quinn in. Where's this going? trying to find Roberto Sickles and only goes as far as the substitute in number five for Casarina who's come on for Tran and number five I think is Bo Thomas looks like it he wins that ball plays it back Dylan Newell Ryan Newell sorry Ryan Newell on the ball Iman Mukhlis with one of those lovely right footers perfectly placed but Story of the night. Just good efforts from uh, Port Darwin. And this will be an infringement and a success in that regard for Port Darwin. Accidental collision to come together between Marimba and uh, Kogi. So Quinn on the ball again. This time on the other side, the North Crest scoreboard side moves in. Puts the ball again, hopefully... Finds a first touch chest from uh, Jose. And unfortunately, it's now a possibility of a counter. This tackle will be important. Goes around him with ease. Puts the ball in. And uh, Savas coming back on the collect. Picks it up. And uh, retrieves the situation. But only as far as uh, Mukulis number 10 on the edge of the box there. I want to thank our sponsors, the uh, Northern Territory Government, for their support. Also, Hyundai. Great supporters of football and for a long, long, long time. Love their work up here in the NT with us. Also to um, North Crest, looking after our scoreboard and our development areas. Steel Line, who sells steel all over the NT. Always do it with service over and above. And NTF, if you're in the game for uh, construction, they are the supply specialists in the construction industry. NTF. Also down there to Sharon and Rebel, thank you for your support throughout the year and all the little extra bits you do for us. We appreciate it forever. And uh, thank you to Umbro and Good Sports as well. My name is Bruce Stalder. I've got Daniel with me. He's giving some expert insights of this game. It's a 2-1 scoreline to Port Darwin. They're in the midfield now. That is the guy who scored two goals for them. So he has 2-0. And so does Port Darwin. Sorry, 2-1. And so does Port Darwin. Fannin puts the ball over looking for Savas. It'll run out of play. There's the sub there on the ball now. That's Bo Thomas. Hey! 
Fannin in again with a, an assured defensive effort. Right, Mark Casemiro on the ball. What will he do with it? He rolls over it. Samson comes in with an early tackle. Ball goes to uh, well controlled by Roberta Sickles. McAvoy's on it. Nice scar. Lovely skills from him, that left footer. Goes to Savas. Savas goes to Jose. Back to Savas in the midfield. He's got a bit of space. He goes out to uh, an advancing but intercepted by Daniel Marimba. So just Tobias Kogi can't go any further with that. Coming up to the 65th minute, Port Darwin running from right to left on your screens in the Claret and Blue have a 2-1 scoreline over. Round 7 here, Darwin's Men's Premier League. Mark Casemiro, dangerous as ever. Puts the ball through. Vantage being played. Daniel Marimba on it. And uh, misplaced that kick. Two players are down. Uh, Mark Casemiro is in a bit of pain. As is Dylan Quinn, number four. So Grace Lane goes out for Port Darwin. And Darren goes out. Has he been called? Yes, he has. Darren will go out for Casarina. Roberto Sickles taking this break in time to give Andrew Savas some instructions. I'm seeing some space in the midfield for Port Darwin, which I don't think I saw in the first half. Am I right there, Daniel? Yeah, the game's certainly opening up uh, more, and I think it's actually having more of an advantage for Casarina here because the more it opens up, the more they're getting on the ball. You can see Mum's getting on the ball a bit. Mark Casimir, uh, Casimiro just before then uh, getting on the ball I think prior to that he hadn't touched nearly 10 minutes and then he's got two touches so the game's opening up again uh, let's hope he can continue to play here now if Casarina are doing that and they're going to benefit from the opening up of the game as you put it what are you saying to your Port Darwin side if you're Lee the Addison their coach don't force it, right? You, you're 2-1 you're up, don't force it. You, you, there's no need to, to play um, the miracle ball over the top and try and create another goal because you can win the game 2-1. Uh, you should just be stretching them, working Kajarin around the pitch, especially at the back. You've got a good goalkeeper who's good at his feet. Use the space, but certainly don't force that ball. Well, we'll see how that plays out. And we're at the 66-minute mark, halfway mark of that 66-minute, and we'll, we'll be definitely having some time added on given we had a collision midfield. Both players are down. Trainers are out with them. And uh, Grace Lane working on the Port Darwin player. Daniel Darren, sorry, working on the uh, Mark Casemiro for Casarina. I've got to say, I've been quite impressed with Andrew Savas since he came on as well. He came on very early in the game. I wasn't sure what we'd get from him. Uh, it's his debut here, but he looks very, very comfortable. And a lot of the composed players come from him just receiving and distributing in the middle there for Port Darwin. Absolutely. Well spotted. Uh, this is not looking good. Stretcher coming out. And this is not good at all. Dylan Quinn looks like he's going to be put on the stretcher. And Dylan was covering for Declan, was he not? In, um, he was. In centre-back. So that's um, two players down the centre-back role. Who's going to be the one to fill in there now? Yeah, that's a, that's a big ask for the club. Um, they lost very early on, I'd say in the first five minutes, Declan O'Shea. So they reshuffled their pack, put um, Quinn back into the central defensive role, and now that is Quinn coming off there, number four. Dylan Quinn on the stretcher. I hope the bloke's okay. And he's gave him a yellow card. Thank you, referee. That was with a... Gave me a yellow card in a red, didn't he? It did look like he gave me a yellow card in a red. I'm a little bit confused here. I think he must have... He did get a yellow earlier. So he's giving him a yellow for the tackle. So it looks like Port Darwin are not only going to be in strife, they're going to be down to 10 men. Right, looks like there'll be a sub made first of all. Someone with a bit of heights coming on. Yeah, even the Port Darwin players are a little bit confused, confused. here. They're just trying to clarify, was he just sent off? So the tackle seen as being a hard tackle. He's given him a yellow card. And he's gone a red. He's given a yellow card both ways. Okay. So they're down to 10 men. And uh, the player that went down, Mark Casemiro, has also been given a yellow. So 68-minute mark, coming up to 69 now. There'll be some time added on after this break and play. 2-1 scoreline to Port Darwin. Now they're up against it. This will have to dig deep, the club, in the culture that Lee Addison is building. And their new president, John Dean, a building within the club, will be tested here. We've seen enough over the last few weeks to see that they've got the personnel. 
and they've got the determination to get there. This will be a real roller coaster. 20 minutes, uh, Daniel. Real roller coaster. Absolutely. Well, Kajarina are feeding off space, and what's going to give you more space than playing against 10 men? So it'll be interesting to see how. how well, you know, what my question is to you when you go down to 10, what are you doing? What's your plan? He's going to get behind the ball, bust it. Exactly. Well, I mean, it's been working for them. Getting behind the ball's worked for them now. Uh, yep. They're ahead in the game, fortunately, so it's not like they have to chase with 10 men. They've just got to defend with 10 men. Okay. Um, they've got to make every ball count. They can't be punting it long. Uh, but they've got to be really smart with how they play this. Let's see how they go then. Some expert comments there. We'll see what evolves over this next 20 minutes. It looks like they've left three at the back here, Port Darwin. Um, yep. Interesting. It's 3v3 straight away. Yep. Okay, the ball comes through to Samson. And uh, Mashamango puts a nice one out over here. Fannin, Fannin now founds Profiti. Profiti's going to play nice skill. Ball's over, thrown in. Coombe Co uh, on the ball, turns in, puts it over the top. Casemiro on it. Casemiro plays back to Ryan Newell. Ryan Newell is brought down by... A stray boot from Roberto Sickles. Now, this is exactly the dangerous place for Imam Luklas, who will take this and has put so many of these in the back of the net, it's not humorous, as they say. <laughs> so, we will see. Anyhow, war's been formed by Port Darwin. They're down to 10 men. Collision to two players before both players got yellow cards. But unfortunately for Dylan Quinn, who came from the field on a stretcher, we'll get an update on his injury and hope he's recovering. And it's not too serious, but Dylan was given a red as well, so that's why they're down to 10. The most experienced player out there on the Kazarina side is on the ball now, Imam Milklis, and equally dangerous as well as being experienced. Number 10, let's see what he does. He's got to get around this wall first. Whistle goes. He moves in, puts it in. Qu uh, Price is down to it. You can see on goal, on shot, Price was there. Well played to Price. Ball still hanging in the air. Just will not leave. It does now. Goes back to him. He'll have another go. And when I say he, I'm talking about Imam Muklas. Now Dominic has the ball. Plenty of time, Price. Take your time, mate. Take your time. 70 minutes, 72nd minute now in this uh, round seven clash. 2-1 scoreline to Port Darwin over Casarina. Really been a fantastic game of football to be a neutral as part of. Coom in there. Good effort from the youngster. Paracos Coom in there. The dancing feet of number 16 for Casarino. Right, Oakland will move over. Experienced player. He's going to have a throw in here. Is the double goal scorer on the ball now. Puts it back to Roberto Sickles, who's been really, really busy this game. Uh, couldn't play last week. That's all right. It'll go back. McAvoy's gone back to the back. I think they've moved right, uh, back to Roy, which is a really smart move. Such an accomplished player. Uh, they're just going to have to work harder. There's Roberto. He was on the ball before. Now he's on the other side of the field. Well played by him. Work hard and play smart. Yes, great point. Smart is so key here. So key. Right. Ball's over on what we call the North Crest scoreboard side of Larrakia Park, Darwin Football Stadium's main pitch. It comes now across to Paracos Coombe, over his head to Hamilton. Hamilton puts a nice little skipping one in front of him. Keeper will come out and collect this calmly and assuredly, and he'll move forward with patience. No urgency here. They're down to 10 men. They've got a 2-1 score line. That one's gone higher than it has longer, but will eventually come bouncing down out of the heavens, the night sky. And uh, into well played Fannin. Last man defending, well played, mate. On the ground now gets up. Typical of his efforts in the last two weeks. He's been absolutely stellar at the back there for Port Darwin. Right. Imam Mukles on the ball, looking for Marimba. Marimba's again early intervention from the captain McAvoy. That's the sort of smart play we're talking about. Now, Monday Jose on the ball. Goes down. Holding his face. Referee goes over, see what that was about. 
Thought there was a stray arm there. He'll be lying on the ground as long as he can just to chew up some of that time. And the referee knows that, gone over. Do I need to call in the trainer? No, he's saying no. So Grace Lane was up and about, ready to go. Right, he's up now. 74-38. That'll just be time out of though, Daniel. So into the uh, coming up to the 75th minute mark, 15 minutes to go. Ten men have Port Darwin up against the full complement of Casarina. So 10 v 11, but the uh, blue and claret side running from left to right on your screen have a 2-1 advantage on the scoreboard. Okay, throw in not correct from the most experienced player. So it'll go back to one of the most inexperienced players out there in Tobias Kogi. Right, Port Darwin with the ball. Possession's the name of the game here. Daniel, I would imagine, keep the ball, keep it away from them. Them being Casarina. That exactly what didn't happen. Ball's gone straight to Casarina player in the dangerous area. Marimba skirts across field, finds Hamilton. Hamilton will look up, find a, the better player. Finds that in Ryan Newell. Ryan Newell goes across to Mooklas. Mooklas puts a lovely ball through to Curtis Smith. Curtis Smith has a shot, and it's wide. That's just how dangerous they can be. Ryan Newell, skillful. Iman Mooklas, so experienced with that pass. And Curtis Smith making a really well-timed run. And, and Terry Fannin did really well to shut that angle there. Otherwise, he could have gone across the face of the goals into that, that far right corner. But Terry's done really well to come across him and force him uh, to the near post, which he narrowly missed. Yep, great work from number 19. One of the most experienced players out there. And he plays for a 10-man side at the moment in Port Darwin. That's Terry Fannin. But, but just how that, that opportunity came about there, they, they played it around just on the edge of the 18. They drew out a couple of men out of that line of Port Darwin, which created the space for them to break through. So we'll keep watch of that. Daniel, with those expert insights, we really need to focus on this game. It's going to be a game very much like a game of chess. Uh, came off unbalanced there. God win back there. That's got to be his playing advantage now. Jose on the ball. Got time. That's a lovely ball. Andrew Savas is on side. Andrew has all the time in the world and just puts it to the right. Get back out of the play. Looks at himself and goes, I should have put that away. Oh, he'll be kicking himself. He had acres of space to run into. And for some reason, he slowed it right down and tried to hit it from there. No commitment to the, refer uh, to the, to the goalkeeper. So now yep. we're on a counter. Now it's very dangerous because it's gone to a player who can do all the danger in the world. He took a shot. Both ends. Both, both ends. balls. Both sides of the goals. And Andrew needs to get out of his head because he's critical. If his team are going to win it here and he's got his hands in his head, he needs to stay Don't awake. Don't forget that. And then a rare, rare misplaced shot from Mark Casemiro. And I think he, because it was Casemiro, Dominic Price just came out. Maybe a little early on that occasion. Well, he knows the speed he has. So the, yeah. the, the more he can come out, the more he can close the angle. It's certainly harder to ship a keeper than yep. it is to put it in the bottom corner. Right. Well, well said. Okay. Sub's going to be made here. Andrew Savas. Andrew Savas is still shaking his head. He needs to let yeah. go of that one. He needs to get that out of his head. So that's Jamie. Zalaski Brocklebank. We'll just call him Brocklebank, I think. And yeah, Jamie, number six, has gone out as a sub for Port Darwin. He has 12 minutes of regulation time and a fair bit of time added, we would guess to get his imprint on this game. He needs to play smart. They need to get behind the ball. They need to forget what's happened in the moment before. Andrew Savas, we're now into a new moment. Let's just concentrate. From the Casarina's point of view, they will not let up. They will be determined to get this goal back. And they have skill across the park. Speaking of skill, there it goes now. Paragos Coombe showing all the skill there. Defenders in there. And that's gone out of play. So Coombe has lost the ball there. This will be... Taken by Samson Mashamango. Samson. First of all, do the correct throw in. Leave it. I just want to highlight Andre Profiti's defensive work there. I mean, he was back there supporting his right back nearly immediately. And, and if they'd broken through there, again, they're exposed. So credit to him. He's been outstanding this game. Okay. That was weird. Profiti took the ball because they thought Samson would put an incorrect throw in, and Afridi did. Right. 
our corner. Now, switched on. Both teams got to be switched on. Price is in there talking to his team. Get them organised. You can see Lee Addison, the coach, barking out orders. Roberta Sickles back in there talking to his players. There's about three or four unmarked men from Casarino there. Ball comes in early. And Price. So that came off Van Lingen's head. His header looped in the air, came down gently into the hands of Price. A few bodies clashed there as well, one of which was the substitute, Bo Thomas. He gingerly gets up and now makes his way back to the central defensive position for Casarina. Casarina are running from right to left. They're in their black and white check with the black shorts. They're called the Rowdies. They have 11 players on the pitch. The team they're up against, Port Darwin, are down to 10 men. But at the 80-minute mark, that 10-men team have a 2-1 scoreline. Can they hold on? Can Casarina draw level? We have 10 minutes of regulation time, and I'd say at least four minutes of time added. Plenty of time for both teams to achieve their goals. This ball comes in dangerously. Crowd was excited, thought that was going to drop into the net. I was excited. You weren't, Daniel. You're too experienced. Uh, ball just went over the uh, goals, and it'll be collected by Dominic Price. Wow, this has been frenetic and dynamic stuff. It really has. It, it absolutely has. And, and if the start of the game was anything to go by, and we saw those challenges coming in, you could see that both teams were, were up for it. And certainly Port Darwin was very hungry for it. So um, for, for their sake, I hope they can hold out here and get their first uh, points on the board. But Casarina are so experienced. They, they've done it to, to my own team, and I've seen them do it to lots of others. They're the champions for a reason, and they can still come back and win this game. Uh, Daniel, with his insights there, um, giving us a, a pretty good summary of what's required from both teams. Um, there's a lot of emotional support for Port Darwin in the stands, uh, trying to get their first win for the season. They've been so close already a couple of times, have shown real skill and determination under their new coach. And uh, Lee Addison is uh, biting whatever nails he's got left. Uh, they're down to 10 men. Can they keep Casarina out? Can they get another goal? That opportunity there earlier could have been 3 or 4-1 up. But they're not. And this man, Iman Lucas, has been communicating and marshalling his troops. Experienced player, Casarina have the ball in the centre of the field here. Curtis Smith on the ball. Nice work again from the substitute. Jamie Brocklebank gets in there. Goes back to the double scorer in uh, Profiti. Profiti finds Roberta Sickles. Nice work from Roberto. All the experience in the world showing. Goes across to Tobias. Tobias would... Uh, the youngster makes a little error there. It's a dangerous one because it now puts an advancing uh, player here. And that advancing player, who I didn't see come on, my fault, is the substitute Luis Rodriguez. Uh, Luis Rodriguez, you talk about pace. He's coming back from injury, so he won't be as fast as he normally is. But he is quick as. Very quickly taken uh, corner by Imam Muklas. He's not mucking around onto the head of Bo Thomas. But it falls away and cleared away by Port Darwin. 82nd minute mark. Hamilton puts one through. Fannin. Fannin onto it. Fannin with all the poise puts it forward. There's no urgency here from Port Darwin, nor there should be. Get behind the ball. Play smart. Keep Casarina out. Casarina, they have one intention. They've got to get the goal back. They are the premiers and champions. Imam's they will want to get the goal back. There. Imam Muklas made the sprint. Will he get this in, into play? He does. Comes in, well played, all ball. Imam's movement off the ball there was really key. You could see that coming probably about 10 seconds before it happened. He stretched the defense of Port Darwin really wide out to that sideline, which created enough space for that ball to come in over the top. So um, that's what an experienced player can do. They can see it two passes, three passes before it happens. And that's what was just in front of us. Tobias Kogi came in with a good challenge, though, to put it out, though it's a corner as a result. Ball goes in, very quickly taken again. Heads are gone. This time the head falls to McAvoy. McAvoy to Bo, Bo across to Hamilton. Hamilton takes a shot. Hands are up in protection, that's okay. Jamie Brocklebank took the full force of that shot from Hamilton. Right, Savas on the ball, puts it over the top. He needs to reclaim this. Tobias comes through, the lovely young fellow. Nice skill from him. Goes through to the dangerous Jose. Ramundo Jose will play some time out there. Goes inside. Lovely ball again. Get there, Savas. He does. Savas beats his man. Takes it up. Goes back inside. Nice cutaway. Run through. Roberto has just gone the wrong way. Go to Roberto now. He's on goal. Roberto comes down. He is pulled from behind. And a penalty has been given. Unnecessary touching. Just, just leave him alone. He'd beaten you. 
Why yeah. would you do that? He was on his left foot at a tough angle. There was no need to pull on that shirt there or, or to make contact with the player. Um, and when someone of the experience of Roberta Sickles is going to make sure you know about it. He knew that was coming. He absolutely knew that was coming. Well, a little bit of luck, a little bit of good fortune, a little good well played experience, well plays. Uh, he gets up gingerly. He's uh, injured. And Roberta Sickles we're talking about. Right, penalty. Will it be taken by the guy who already has two goals? Or will it be taken by Jose? It looks like it's by Andre, Andre Profiti, sorry, from here. Yes, it is. He already has two goals. He steps back. The whistle's about to be blown. He has his weight forward. He moves in. Little jiggle of the legs moves in and puts it in. There he is. A hat trick. Three goals. Three goals for him. Three goals for Port Darwin. 3-1. Ten men over 11. We have four and a half minutes to go of regulation time and a fair amount of time added. Well taken penalty, mate. Very well taken penalty. He hit that with a lot of venom um, and placed it really well. I think that hit the, the, the back um, post there um, and, and it's just gone right yeah, in. Yeah, the net was shaking and Brand, uh, Braden McLennan can do anything about that. But that's a good indication of this player. He's been in there the last couple of weeks and has been extremely, extremely, not extremely, extremely strong presence in this Port Darwin lineup. And tonight, he's just shone. Three goals, 14 is his number. His surname is Profiti. Andre is his first name. Albanian, here in Darwin. Welcome, mate. Right, uni, well, the universal player in terms of um, Imam Muklas trying to put something on there and it doesn't become successful. Rodriguez doesn't get the ball. It'll go out harmlessly. There'll be a substitution made now. Looks like Isaac Paul's going to come on. It is Isaac Paul, number 10. So Andrew Savas runs from the field. Just like to highlight, uh, I think it's Bo Thomas here, number 15 for Casarina. He's done a really good job the last few runs of plays of overloading on this one side here. His teammates haven't found him, uh, but he's certainly been on and he's had miles of space. So if he keeps making those runs and someone sees him, he'll be well and truly on. So uh, Tobias goes on, the uh, number 10, and here's uh, a sub now following. Curtis Smith's going to come off. And number four will go on, Dylan Quinn. Dylan's coming back from uh, a brand-new stop at the hairdressers. But more importantly, he's been coming back from injury. Uh, he'll go and join his brother out there, Ryan Newell. Uh, a dangerous pairing they can be. He won't be drawing Ryan because Ryan's come off. That's right and was replaced. And his replacement was Dylan Vong. I just sort of thought I saw Dylan out there, number six. So Dylan's replaced Ryan for Port, uh, for Casarina. So there's the hat trigger on the ball then. This has gone through, it's played on. Isaac Paul on the ball, he's all the time in the world and he makes it count. Oh, boy, did he make it count. Been on the pitch for 30 seconds and makes it 4-1. Number 10, replacement, substitute, Isaac Paul. Beautifully taken breakaway goal. Exactly. He, he broke through there. He was quite lucky to get that ball sort of gifted to him, but he made it count. Uh, it's always tricky when you're running onto the keeper like that. You lapse your concentration for a moment and that ball will dribble away from you and a keeper like, like Braden there will come, will come out and claim it. But uh, Isaac's... Isaac's uh, dribble there was quite good. The ball was kept close to him, and he was very composed when it came to finishing. And, and, and Daniel, we thought it was a 4-1 scoreline. It could have been a 4-1 scoreline, and that's what we got now. So credit to Port Darwin, 10 men. That takes a lot of effort. It does take a lot of effort, and, and, and credit to the game plan they've gone out there with. Um, yep. it, it's working for them, but they still can't go to sleep here. I know okay. it's highly unlikely, but all it takes is a goal or two, um, and, and this could start oh, turning around. We've that? only got a couple of minutes, but... We're looking at probably four to five minutes at a time here as yep, well. There's yep. still time for goals. Yep. Yeah, absolutely right, Daniel. That's always uh, such a beautiful game. 
uh, you really can turn around two goals and it's at that dangerous 4-3 level. Anyhow, we'll see what happens. It's uh, 89th minute regulation time. The countdown's coming up to the 90 minute mark. We don't know how much time added, but we're thinking around four or five. And we'll find out shortly as that time clock unrolls. So here we have a ball through from the captain. McAvoy has gone back to the back and marshaled his troops so effectively since they've gone down to 10 men. He's a really accomplished player. Nice tackle early by, again, the hat-tricker. Hat-tricker puts the ball through to Roberto. Roberto does an even better ball through. And uh, this time, just once, uh, that's Jose, Ramundo Jose, doing all the effort. That was Jamie Brocklebank in the midfield, actually. And they put that ball through to Roberto, and Roberto won. Okay, we come back to Luis Rodriguez. He does a inside pass. Okay, look Nicholas. at the space that Bo Thomas has here on this side. Will they see him? He's on. They go up the centre. Ball will be come off a player, and uh, Samson ricochets off his right boot and will go into the uh, reliable hands of Dominic Price. Dominic Price goes back. That's a good, hefty kick. Maybe he should have. Uh, That'll be all right. It's fallen the right way to Roberto Sickles. Sickles goes across to Ramundo Jose. He goes back to Roberto. Roberto will play around and eat up some time here. We're now out of regulation time well and truly. We're now into time added. Ball's loose. Jamie's in there. Jamie wins that ball, goes to Fannin. Fannin puts the ball over the top. And Isaac goes for another attempt. This time he's offside. This will eat up some time, though. Braden. Has to go back to collect the ball. Port Darwin will make another substitute. This time they'll bring on number 15. Peter Bartlett. Which, yeah, which is Peter Bartlett. I assume they're going to, yep, they're going to bring off Jose. So Ramando Jose has had a fantastic 90 minutes. Has really been involved in a lot of the uh, clever stuff that's come out of the midfield. You talk about a smart player. He is one of them. Very, very creative, and he's, he's really tested the defence of Casarina tonight. They haven't known when to dive in for that tackle and when to let him, when to let him run, and um, he, he's great on the ball and great to watch. Yeah, and that's the, you know, smart players make you think twice, and once you do that, they're away. Imam Muklas on the ball for Casarina in the middle. He goes to Dylan Vong. Dylan Vong puts it through to Marky Casemiro. The call comes Marky from Luis Rosigas, but uh, Jamie Brocklebank is in there and clears it. Only as far as the substitute in Bartlett. Ball still with Casarina. Casemiro on the ball. Dangerous. He make the run. Still on the ball. Still on the ball. And what a determined effort from him. And to your point, in the time out, it now goes to 4-2. That's an individual glory. That's all you can say that is. It is a glorified it goal. Takes well it to the top of the, the goal scorer leaderboard, above Simon Bell now, yep. nine goals. And he worked hard for that. There was three or four efforts in that. He got over, through, and under players to get to that ball and still put it past Price. He did. I kept thinking he was going to go down there, but credit to him, he stayed on his feet um, and, and he tucked that one away. So we have a 4-2 scoreline. We're into uh, time added here. This is the Men's Premier League Round 7. Port Darwin yet to get a win. Down to 10 men. Have a two advantage on the scoreboard, but there is time for Casarina and the dangerous Casarina to get back. Rodriguez pinches the ball and that will go and let it roll and roll and roll into the hands and Price will take his time picking this up Rodriguez goes down to make the action happen he does that and Price he picks the ball up he'll move forward to the edge of the box the referee blows whistle we do have a victory for Port Darwin 4-2 their fans are very excited lots of applause their horse like I am that was an exciting game six goals what was there, though, Daniel? Was this tension all the way through? Could they get their first win? Could they stand it from a 10-man position? And, and maybe this is the turnaround their season needs. It's not just their, their first win, but it's the first win against the champions of last season um, who are in form as well. Uh, so, look, that, that's great for Port Darwin. There. Hopefully that's confidence building going forward. Well put, Daniel. We'll, we'll pick apart the uh, second half. We'll get a couple of the players up from Port Darwin. You and I will put them under the spotlight. But we just leave you now with a 4-2 scoreline. Port Darwin over Casarina. This is the Darwin Football uh, Men's Premier League here in Darwin. We're out on the Perform Network. That was exciting. Six goals, a really great half. And as I said, theatre, anticipation, expectation, and tension running all through it. And when they got down to 10 men, it just lifted it. 
It was Academy Award-like stuff. I enjoyed it so, so much as a neutral. I hope you did as well. Stay with us. We've got more to go as we pick this game apart and also hear from a team that I'm sure will be elated with their performance. Kazarina will go back, heads down a bit. Body language not perfect, but they're such a champion side. They will be back. My name is Bruce Stalder. We'll take a short break, get some highlights, and then, as I said, get some analysis. That is Coombe on the ball now, who will be dangerous. That's a lovely ball through. If he's got time and place, he does. He turns on the right foot. He'll have a shot. Of course he will. That's Daniel Marimba. Seb Smith on the overlap. He ignores him, goes into Coombe. Coombe's on the ball. And great work from the keeper. Won't get it, because this ball's gone through to Savas on the run. Savas puts it across. It goes into Oakland. Oakland has a hand to go across. This is in Freedy. He goes in shot. It's a and goal. It's in. It is a goal. And a player I mentioned earlier on, so Don't get it, because this ball's gone through to Savas on the run. Savas puts it across. It goes into Oakland. Oakland has a hand to go across. This is in Freedy. He goes in shot. It's a and goal. It's in. It is a goal. Go to, well, he attempted to go to uh, Marimba. Fannin will have to go back. Martin Casemiro is there early. That is what he can do. That is sensational. Mark Casemiro, you go are. To, well, he attempted to go to uh, Marimba. Fannin will have to go back. Martin Casemiro is there early. That is what he can do. That is sensational. Mark Casemiro, you are a out-and-out -out striker. The ball. He's got a wall formed and he moves. He's going to leave it for Roberto. No, he doesn't. Roberto dubbies over the top. Now it's going to be him. He has that shot and That's he puts it. it in. It is a brace. What a beautiful taken shot. The ball. He's got a wall formed and he moves. He's going to leave it for Roberto. No, he doesn't. Roberto dubbies over the top. Now it's going to be him. He has that shot and That's he puts it. it in. It is a brace. What a beautiful taken shot. To your point, Daniel, they have a really assertive and, and, and uh, what we call a positive mindset tonight. And there's a good example of it. They almost fooled themselves, certainly fooled me, but they had a jump over from Roberto. A pass. He should have gone then. He's going to go with his left. Will he go with his left? He dances again. Roberto Sigurd goes across. This goal's played on. McAvoy has an opportunity. Dances in behind him. Could yeah, they really could have put that one away there. Yeah, good point, Daniel. Okay. Jose puts a drifting over the top. It does find the head. 
Oh, well played. To a player that's got that in, a better player. Finds that in Ryan Neal. Ryan Neal goes across to Mooklas. Mooklas puts a lovely ball through to Curtis Smith. Curtis Smith has a shot, and it's wide. That's just how dangerous they can be. Ring advantage now. Jose on the ball. Got time. That's a lovely ball. Andrew Savas is on side. Andrew has all the time in the world. And just puts it to the right. Get back out. No commitment to the, refer uh, to the, to the goalkeeper. So now yep. we're on a counter. Now it's very dangerous because it's gone to a player who can do all the danger in the world. He took a shot. Both Roberto has just gone the wrong way. Go to Roberto now. He's on goal. Roberto comes down. He is pulled from weight forward. He moves in. Little jiggle of the legs moves in and puts it in. There he is. A hat trick. Three goals. Three goals for him. Three goals for Port Darwin. As he's weight forward. He moves in. Little jiggle of the legs moves in and puts it in. There he is. A trigger on the ball. Trigger then. on the ball then. This has gone through. It's played on. Isaac Paul on the ball. He's all the time in the world. And he makes a count. Oh, boy, did he make a count. Bartlett. Ball still with Casarina. Casemiro on the ball. Dangerous. He make the run. Still on the ball. Still on the ball. And what a determined effort from him. And to your point, in the time out, it now goes to 4-2. That's an individual glory. That's all you can say that is. It, it is, is a glorified it, it goal. Well takes played. it to the top of the, the goal scorer leaderboard. Bartlett. Ball still with Casarina. Casemiro on the ball. Dangerous. He make the run. Still on the ball. Still on the ball. And what a determined effort from him. And to your point, in the time out, it now goes to 4-2. That's an individual glory. That's all you can say that is. It, it is a glorified it, it goal. Well takes played. it to the top of the, the goal scorer leaderboard. Above. Well, welcome back. That was a really good snapshot of uh, 90 minutes plus of football, which was just end-to-end -end stuff, exciting. As a neutral, just love that game of football. There was such an inbuilt tension. And I know I'm going to go to you in a minute, Lee, but I know you don't like going down to 10 men. But for a neutral, it just added so much excitement to that game. Could you guys hang on? Could you rebuild? Could the momentum stay there? The first thing I've got to say to you, your players played so smart tonight. Yeah, totally, Bruce. Um it's just unbelievable, obviously, getting the win. Yeah, fantastic. And we've been working for oh, well, six, seven weeks, yep. working on schedules, working on players. And then, obviously, last week, unfortunately, against Mindel. Uh, and then, yeah, so the guys, you could see in the, in the training this week, the guys just wanted it so much. Yeah, hold on to the mic, because I'm going to give it to... Um to Daniel ask a couple of questions but I want to talk about the fact that it's a new team a new coach you're finding the players you want to put them where you want to put them the thing is mate over the last those six or seven weeks you could see it building you could see moments where it made sense and then last week it was so near and today and I, I just had so much confidence in what I saw out there and when you went to 10 you move Ryan back to the back he just patrolled the back there I just thought the stuff as a coach mate you should be I know you hate this but that was a really well coached game thank you very much Bruce yeah, yeah it was, it was Full credit to the guys. You know, obviously they're going to celebrate tonight. Yeah, uh, and I'm so sure they should. Are. Um, like I said, we, we've worked hard. Really, really worked hard. So it's, it's credit to them that obviously the results are there. Yeah, absolutely. Daniel? I'll grab this mic back. Um, look, I, I got down here a little bit early. I was watching your warm-up. There was certainly a hunger in it, and I was on the receiving end of that hunger last week. Um, <laughs> you, you came out, I think there was three fouls in the first minute. It looked like part of your game plan was to impose yourself physically uh, and sort of disrupt Casarina, not allow them to feel safe or not allow them to feel like they can, they can dribble past anyone. Um, you, you, you sat quite deep. You really restricted the space for Mark Casemiro to play in. It looked like that was a really intentional game plan. I mean, do you have any comments there? Was that the game plan? Um, like I said... You know, obviously from right at the beginning of this, um, we, we want to play attacking football. And our philosophy is to get the younger guys yeah. all the way through. Um, and luckily, we've recruited quite well. So to have these individuals, that's all they want to do. They want to play that attacking player and they want to push up and they want to obviously close the space for the opposition. And I'm more than happy with that if they give me results like this. Mm. It looked like, and I made the comment to Bruce earlier as well, I was having a look through some of the Premier squad lists, and you've had 32 different players play for your Premier team. So uh, as, as a coach with your first year with the, with the team and the club this year, are you still trying to figure out your best team? It certainly looks like that, that core is starting to stabilise a bit. You're you know, having the same guys in there week in, week out. Um, is that the case? It's, um, it's not so much the case. It's, unfortunately, we have had massive injuries. Uh, obviously, Jockwell last week, um, Fischl, um we've, we've picked up a few injuries today. And it, we've just not been able to get that stable side. And it's not purely for selection purposes. It's purely because of injury. 
So luckily we've had the players to come in and be able to jump in them positions for us. Um, we were missing the right and left back this morning, uh, sorry, today. Yeah. Um, luckily the guys jumped in and were willing to play and it was a last minute change. Yeah. You know, literally we only found out about four o'clock today. So we've got the talent, the quality in order to do that. Yeah, and they're understanding your game. Can you give that microphone to Mr McAvoy? Buddy, thank you for joining us. It's no so problem. good to see you out there playing football. Cheers, I just want to quickly tell you a little bit about your background because you've just got time on the ball, mate. If you were a cricketer, that ball would come to you so late and you'd play it late. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well done. Where you been? What's, what's your history? Uh, so, yeah, from Ireland, Dublin. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Funny that. Exactly. You would have heard that after a couple of seconds. But yeah. uh, no, I played back in Ireland for a couple of years. And then in uh, 2016, I came out to Australia. Right. And I'd done a season in uh, Melbourne and I went back home. And then I just really came back out and... Uh, this year, when I found out I was able to stay, obviously with all this COVID, it was crazy, but I was probably one of the fortunate ones that yeah. managed to stay in the country due to it. Um, my girlfriend, she's in childcare, so she was class as an essential worker, so we were able to stay. And once I knew I could do another season, I, I started messaging clubs up here, and uh, Lee just got onto me straight away, and that was me done. Um, I'd committed to that. Uh, I just wanted to change it up and, and do something different, you know, and, and I'm delighted. I'm uh, mate, we're so glad to have you. I just want to get an insight. Have you ever been given a red card while you're on a stretcher? <laughs> and I know, like, like Quinn is just coming across, yeah. he's in pain, uh, yeah. and he I, looks I, up and goes, what? Yeah, I had no idea. Have you seen yeah. that? I had no idea. <laughs> Look, I, I, I hadn't a clue. When John called me off when he was like, you're going to sit in, and I was, yeah. What? Was, that's what I have been doing, and he was like, no, nah, no, nah, at the back, was like, he has been sent <laughs> off, and I was like, Look, you just have to do what you have to do, you yeah. know, um, we just had to get out there then, and it happened, so we had to manage it, and that's what we do, and that's what we try and do when I'm out there a little bit. I'm a little bit older than a lot of the lads here, and I've played, and I can't bring any more ability to the lad. All I can bring is experience, in a sense, you know, and that's why I'm trying to talk to these young lads through the game, just trying to make them better players that way. And, I mean, look, we had a decent game last week and we were very disappointed to lose. But tonight we're fully deserving of it and I think we got more respect because of performance last week and everybody's going to start taking a bit more uh, notice of us. Yeah, look, so well, well put. I think that's so spot on. Keep the mic. Daniel? Yeah, look, I, I think it, it was quite evident your experience and composure that you brought on the ball there. You had uh, the vision uh, to, to find a few key players in over the top and just when to go back and when to go forward. Um, having played sort of all around the world by the sounds of it uh, and then coming into the league in Darwin, having your debut last week, what's, what, what are the main key, uh, key points of difference? Uh, obviously, the, the weather's probably part yeah, of it. Yeah, that's a big one for me, man. Last week, after 65 minutes, you could have got the stretcher out for me, if I'm honest. But um, no, look, when, when I knew, I couldn't have knew I was coming up here middle of May sometime and sort of the minute like I said I started speaking to Lee and that uh, I start watching every game so I watched every game the three games every weekend for my own sake to see what the team I was like was coming to and what the, the league was like and what I could hopefully come and bring to it you know and look like I said oh, the, oh, that's my game out there you're saying to me I can play cricket it's because I can't run <laughs> no I honestly look that, that's my game and I like to be, play a bit more composed on the ball and I try and just bring that shoot to everybody because when we compose and you could see it tonight we're playing little triangles around three lads in the corner there and we're getting out and when you've that confidence it, it's great you know when you start getting results like that because when I watch the results it just looked we're lacking a little bit of confidence and look, that's all I try to come in and bring into the lads and, and I hope I can help that but it's down to everybody to take that responsibility on and when you get good results, confidence goes up and you start feeling like you can beat anybody and, and hopefully we can kick on next week now. I think uh, it's evident across a, a number of clubs and Port Dallin's certainly one of them. There's a lot of young players in there. Um, so, so having a guy like you there able to mentor them um, is invaluable, really. Um, it, was there anyone standing up for you with the young talent coming through? Um, I mean, Tobias had a great game today. Yeah, he was great today. Yeah, he had a really good game today. Look, I said, when I watched all the games across all the teams, I've seen heaps of raw talent up here. You know, young lads that have flashes of brilliance. And, you know, there's a lot of potential there in them across the whole league. And I think, like I said, experienced players are vital to bringing them lads through and, and have them work on the other parts of the game, not their ability and everything like that. But, look, the two, the right and the left full tonight, the two boys are brilliant. I, I couldn't pick anyone out there tonight and say, could have done more. You know, Sav come in there after 15 minutes or whatever, not even. And, you know, that first 10 minutes when you come off the bench is really difficult. And he walked his his socks off, I'll say. Um, yeah, he worked so hard in there and he, and he felt toward later on. But look, everybody has a part to play in the team and that's what we need to make sure everybody feels that important to the group and we'll get them with those all too.
Uh, that's McAvoy, the captain of Port Darwin. He's happy. Next to him is Lee Addison, the coach of Port Darwin. He's happy. Daniel next to him is less happy. But anyhow, you'll have to face him sometime from now. I'm happy as a neutral. That was a fantastic game of football. Lee, I'm just going to make a statement. I don't need a response from you. But what that says about adversity and overcoming adversity, you, went, you, you lost the Bush Ranger in 13 seconds. Younger Andrew went out there. Then you lost Quinn. Then you were down to 10 men. It was in the context of it being hard that makes it even more special for you, I bet you. So such a, a, a deserving result 4-2 Port Darwin go home with a win and to what McAvoy was just saying before then this will inspire these guys to greater things the confidence there and look forward to next weekend when these guys go around again make sure you catch up with Port Darwin next weekend my name is Bruce Sauter thank you for supporting Men's Premier League here in Darwin we will uh, leave you with a, a thought for tomorrow. We're back again at 8 o'clock where this gentleman on my right here will be playing uh, in the role of coach when Mind will take on Hellenic. Top of the table clash. It could go any way. But the thing we love about Darwin football is it will be determined. There will be plenty of effort. It will be dynamic and it will be tough. See you tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Good night.